Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to the 12th episode of Grandmaster Chess. Uh, today's guest is a very, very famous chess trainer, a chess author and a wonderful person, uh, Jakob Ogod. Uh, this is how I pronounce it. I know that in spite of knowing him for many years, I get his name wrong. We will learn it from him when he is here. A warm welcome to everyone in the chat. Uh, before we go live today, I wanted to give you a small introduction of the man from whom you will be learning today. Uh, and this is going to be very exciting because he is actually very good at this thing about training amateurs. Uh, and he has done that. For example, the picture that you see on the screen is one where Jakob is receiving a prize for best book of the year from Vishy Anand. So this is one of the things. He's an amazing author. There are some brilliant books that he has written. You can see here. These are six of his Grandmaster Preparation Series books, which are perhaps one of the best seller books in the world um, of chess. He has also worked a lot with Boris Kelfat, uh, working with him as his trainer, as a second and also uh, written books with him. So, you know, these books which are very nice, the dynamic decision making, positional decision making and now the two more new books which have come, major piece end games and technical decision making are all uh, have all been written along with uh, Jakob, you know, Jakob and Boris have written them together. Uh, apart from that, he has trained some amazingly top players. Uh, I want to know from the chat, do you recognize who this player is in the frame right now? If you do, then please let me know uh, in the comments. Who do you think is this player? People are asking when is matter of technique coming, Jacob. Well, well, we'll ask him when he is here. Yes, Kushal Chess, you are right. Suryan Shwarma, absolutely. This is none other than Sam Shankland, who is former US champion, one of the top players in the world, working with Jacob. He went up to nearly 2720 ELO, you know, uh, close to 2730 fantastic chess player and uh, you see one of the pictures here when Jakob was in India he he conducted training camps where even players like Tibendu Baruwa, Surya Ganguly, Diptayan Ghosh learned from him so even the best have learned from him and at the same time he's able to teach absolute Beginners or you can say amateurs here. You can see this one is from the Philippines where he's training um, Someone who's not as strong as a GM and uh, he does it with equal interest He was the coach of the Indian women's team uh, at the Olympiad in 2018 and uh, Well essentially he just loves chess a lot because whenever he gets time he plays chess You can see here. He's playing chess with Eugenio Torre uh, one of the finest grandmasters, I uh, I believe, uh, one of the first GMs of Asia. And, yeah, he just loves to play chess. That's what you guys, whenever I've seen him, he's always playing chess. So it gives me immense pleasure uh, to welcome the one and only Jakob Ogard. Hello, Jakob. Hello, thank you. So should I correct your history here? A <laughs> okay, okay, one second. Let me let me come here and bring you on the screen here. Yes, please do. Please correct me. Okay, so the first first slide error was that Sam Shankland's peak rating was twenty seven thirty one. I, I said 2730, okay. No, you so. said almost, almost. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would catch me there. I should have done my research, yeah. And uh, okay, here maybe the chat will uh, will correct me, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Tora actually was the first Grandmaster of Asia. Well, well, I wrote that in an article and I remember someone told me that it was someone else. So I just was a little careful right now because I wrote an article on it, uh, on, on Tore. Maybe there was someone else, but yeah. Possibly, possibly he's the first one. 
Possibly. <laughs> we, we are strong historians. <laughs> so, uh, Jakob, while we are talking, we have two students who have already arrived right now. Uh, and let me welcome them in the... U By the way, uh, yeah, well, while they are here, I will ask you. Welcome, Samai. Welcome, Vaibhav. Hello, hey, Jakob. Hi, hi, Jakob. Hi. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Vaibhav, you got his name right in the first go itself. You said Jakob, not Jacob, yeah. first of all. Hey, yeah, I also and... say Jakob only. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but your task is now to pronounce his second name. Hogard. Hogard, okay. And what about Vaibhav? Yeah. Yeah, Jakob Hogard. That's yeah. what I know. Yeah, everyone can do it, Saga. It's just you. <laughs> <laughs> Jakob, you told me it's O oh God. O oh God. Yeah, O oh oh God. God. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, no. All women can say it. <laughs> <laughs> just need special lessons and everything's okay. So I, I was wondering here, uh, sirs, you, 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 you will be the experts. Um, but I have a question for you that I desperately need to answer. I'm sorry to hijack the conversation saga, but you know, comedy in the West, it is all centered around just saying very rude things. Um, but you know, India is such a polite uh, society that you know you don't go to the toilet. No, 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 it's the washroom because we don't mention what happens there. What is the essence of Indian comedy? Very nice question. Uh, it's not just nice, I think it's really tough also. <laughs> <laughs> to summarize why we say washroom and not toilet would be very difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's but, like... Uh, uh, I guess like there's, uh, <clears throat> we are a little more conservative uh, in some senses. So, uh, I don't know, I mean like, uh, but I guess like we don't see much of a difference because we are part of it, so we know the ways around it. Because every rule has loopholes, I guess. Yeah. I guess we just do that. But yeah, uh, to us, obviously, the Western style of comedy seems a lot more liberal, which is uh, fascinating, honestly. So, yeah, I don't know if I can summarize in one way, one line, like what essence would it, be. It just yeah. sounds crass when we say it, uh, the same things in Hindi as we would say it in English. Let's say it like that. So, we rather <laughs> be polite. Imagine, yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, in general, Vaibhav and Samai are uh, two of the topmost uh, stand-up comedians of India. And uh, they also, Biswa, who will be joining us very shortly, he just messaged me saying he is coming back as soon as possible. So we would start when he is here. But, uh, you know, they, Jakob, they have started loving chess a lot in this lockdown. And it seemed like it would last for a few months, but it's now over eight months. And they have gotten completely into it uh, and, and kept on improving. Like Samai has almost reached a rating of 1600 and uh, Vaibhav is close to 1450 uh, and, and they are all improving step by step. I think it took me two and a half, three years to reach uh, 1600. And I, I was a good deal younger, so I should in theory have been learning faster. So... Uh, but then I, I I didn't have access to the same training. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have been. Uh, for example, Samai worked extensively with Surya Ganguly recently for Comedians on Board, while Vaibo worked with Adiban, and we also have been working since quite some time. So they are they are uh, loving it. Uh, yeah. So. Most beautiful part. Every day there is completely new concept to learn. Like yesterday, uh, we saw a game between Anish Giri and uh, this uh, GM uh, Vidit Gujarati, and mm -hmm. uh, there was a Rook versus Rook and Bishop end game, and I had never seen that before. And uh, what was that uh, saga? What was that? Uh, there were two types of defenses: yeah, second yeah. rank defense and Cochrane defense. Cochrane defense. So these are some new concepts completely. And uh, every time we see a game, there's something completely new to learn. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I have the same experience uh, analyzing chess for many, many years. I, I learn new things all the time. Amazing. And uh, Samai, can you show the book that you are reading right now? Hey! <laughs> I wrote part of that book. <laughs> Amazing. I've been like completely glued to it. I've not done anything yesterday, just reading this book. 
he he loves the king's gambit so he has been uh, you know first he learnt a bit and then suddenly vidit gifted him this book and i said you are not going to read it it's 600 pages big i mean you're, you it's too much for you but he's reading it and it's very surprising yeah, it's interesting i mean it it feels great to read it it's it's a really big book <laughs> <laughs> it's a we 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 usually say that uh you cannot wear it in public uh, the hardback version because it'd be considered a deadly weapon <laughs> hopefully in oh, your right. hands this will be true <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is kind of big but yeah it's i'll get there yeah and yakob is also a big uh, guitar fan uh, he is uh, he loves Absolutely. playing the guitar as uh, also samai i think uh, loves the guitar uh, especially the blues so you know usually when i tell this to samai he gets uh, that person to start playing the guitar next time <laughs> really so we, what we, we oh let's go let's uh, go let's see this is my new one i just bought it oh, we're wow. locked down again so i thought i needed a new friend so it's a wow. new tele so amazing amazing uh we will do it at the end if there is time yakob uh, and also no 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, i understand it's comedy but there must be limitations <laughs> uh i also wanted to show you what has been going on here so these are the standings uh, as of now for grandmaster chess uh the series it's been this is the 12th episode uh and currently it's being led by vaibhav who is here and very close to him is biswa who is who will be joining us shortly i think anirban today is not available i tried to reach him and uh, i i am not a weak chess player i i'm just uh, my sleep cycle is not correct that's all <laughs> <laughs> You know, usually if you see twelve and half points, you think, oh, Samai must be the weakest of them all. But well, he came only for two uh, of the lessons, uh, and uh, today is the third time that he is joining in. Uh, and well, I, I have to have to say this proves tremendous uh, talent when you are uh, present only for two sessions, but manage to score points in three. Yes. Uh, the, well, the third one <laughs> he came for just one point. He just but came I, for two minutes. And he gave one right answer. <laughs> But I used to see all of them, and I used to score from my home, and I'm pretty sure I would be leading otherwise. Oh, today I will prove my merit. Okay, if you can win today, Samai, then yeah. I will agree to it. Let's see if you Let's can do it. By and by the way, Yakub is very good at picking positions. In fact. he has made a living out of it because he has a database of so many positions he has written so many books so when he picks positions they are really very instructive so there are uh, today not 10 but 9 positions that we will be looking at uh, and uh, that's how it will go by the way uh, just before we begin can i just oh ha bol bol are aa gaya aa gaya samay aa gaya sorry biswas hey, yeah biswas lobby dia Sorry, sorry. You know, in this book, it says, "Is the king's gambit the ideal choice as a competitive weapon?" Honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the opening of the book. <laughs> yeah, that's the opening. <laughs> hello, hello, Biswa. Welcome. Hi, hi. How are you? Very good. Meet Jacob. Uh, hi, Jacob. How are you? Hi, Biswa. Nice to meet you, man. Pleasure. And so, uh, guys, uh, now that all three of you are here. Let's begin with today's training session, and uh, I will just fix everyone here uh, and get Jakob next to me in the trainer zone. That's where Jakob belongs. How are you feeling, Samay? Oh, very nice. Very uh, <laughs> optimistic about today's class. Okay. <laughs> why did you ask that, Viswa? Because he lost the tournament. No, that's why. <laughs> 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 I've been sulking for two days. <laughs> hey, hey, Yakob, can you please uh, hang your bishop somewhere in the game? Samay will miss it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you you know I will be like the world champion and make a mass slip. <laughs> so, 
Carlson yesterday. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, I, I, I really uh, understand why you guys are going into chess because chess is going into comedy these days. <laughs> uh, well, Jakob is uh, is a like a firm adherent of uh, classical chess. He loves uh, the longer time controls, and he thinks that online chess is uh, like comedy. You know, uh, doesn't fit the stature of you know the chess in general. Well, as, as you probably said, this in a way that doesn't make me sound even older than I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, it's, uh, I, I appreciate everything for what it is. Uh, and I like computer games and I uh, play computer games and, uh, uh, and this is fine. But uh, when we see the world champion uh, making mouse slip and this is deciding tournaments and I'm like, <laughs> then, uh, the, the, yeah. then it's not the same. Um, <laughs> By the way, I thought a group of comedians would, would enjoy this. So um, a few months ago, I started getting some problems with my wrists. So I started using, you know, these kind of things to strengthen my fingers. Wow. So this very quickly, this, I didn't need this anymore. And then I turned on to this one here, which is, uh, it's like 50 kilos. But now this has also become quite easy. So uh, now I have this thing here. So this is up to 150 kilos of pressure. I'm not quite there yet, but uh, I will get there. This is this is really the weirdest thing you've ever seen, isn't it? Wow. I think in the progression, next you'll take a bike. And you'll just be like... <laughs> no, I, I am thinking uh, I will be the player where nobody shows up with because my hand, <laughs> my grip will be deadly, you know? Yeah. It was already quite uh, hard, you know, when, when you were here three years ago. It was already quite strong your grip i think it would become even tougher when we meet next i think i saw once uh, in that uh, bobby fisher documentary that he wanted to train a lot uh, and just have a very very firm grip because he said that very when i shake the russians hand i want them to feel that uh, you know i want them to feel terrified and intimidated yeah mm -hmm. well uh, today's game let's begin with it it's going to be uh, white is Simon Williams, uh, 2480, and black is Jakob, who was 2467 at that time. Uh, this is played uh, in 2007 at the British Championship. Is that correct, Jakob? It is. It is. It's a, a personal moment of triumph as I actually won the tournament. Um, but this play played on board one. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, I'm sorry to say that for lovers of uh, Gambit and King's Gambit and Wild Chess, that this is a very technical game. I thought rather than having something uh, incredibly complex, we would do something more strategic today and more practical. So uh, there will sort of be a lot of bonus points, I guess, for for moves that are also good. So in that way, it's a very friendly session. Yes. Um, Wonderful. Okay. And yeah, you were playing black. Uh, was this also an important from the tournament perspective? Like you were playing, it's the seventh round. Were you playing for the title? Well, I, it was played on board one. I had five and a half out of six. And mm -hmm. I think I was leading by full point at this point. Okay. Uh, okay. And did you win this tournament then? I did, yes. Wow, only time I played the British Championship, I won it. Brilliant. So, uh, Jakob is black. Uh, Simon Williams, also a very aggressive player, opens the game with 1e4. Jakob plays c5. Knight to f3. e6. And now, uh, slightly offbeat opening b3. You know, were you surprised, Jakob, with this move, B3? Um, I knew it. Uh, I had played it myself. So uh, I was surprised by E4. I was expecting D4. This was uh, around the early days of this uh, big gambit he, he had uh, invented in the Queen's uh, Indian. I thought he would play that. But... Uh, you, uh, you mean uh, this D4, Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight F3, B6, G3 and uh bishop a6 yeah. bishop a6 and queen c2 yeah this one yeah c5 b5 
and it gives up the pawn for for central squares. Mm. So this Which was is... uh, his sort of invention. Um... Yeah, and after that, it was played by everyone. You know, really, really everyone. Like Topalov uh, beat an end in twenty-five moves with it once. Yes, so... became very popular. So B three and Yakov went B six, D four. C takes d4, knight takes d4, and now we reach an open sort of open Sicilian, but with this uh, slightly weird move b3. So here's your first question, guys: What should Black play here in this position? And I'm going to give you only two minutes for this one. Uh, or Jakob, you can also suggest the time if you want to. Uh, how much time should be given? Um, that that could be fine. Uh, so, but I would rather say let. I want them to choose between two moves here. Okay. So there are two possible moves. Let's say Bishop B seven and A six. So Bishop these are your two moves. And A six. Okay. And which one would would you play from a pragmatic sense? So I'm going to flip me horizontally. So you have to choose out of these two only. Only out of these two. Oh, we have uh, Yakov in the chat. Aradya Garg, who is here, uh, who is also watching this, and Aradya uh, was with us uh, when you were in India. Yeah, I met him first time in in Delhi, yeah. and uh, with, with you, and then uh, he tagged on with us to Calcutta. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, uh, and uh, Aradya and I, we, we we are still working together. He's a member of uh, Killer Chess Training, and uh, I was talking to him an hour before the uh, the show. Wow! And uh, talking about the latest homework I, I gave the guys at the academy, and amazing. He had the same feeling as many others that uh, when he was doing it, he felt uh, brilliant, and then afterwards, he felt like an idiot. <laughs> and uh, I think this was very characteristic for this week's homework, where I already apologized publicly for how difficult it was. Ah, okay. Okay. I must tell the people here that Jakob has uh, an online academy called Killer Chess Training. I'll tell you guys more about it later. But right now, two minutes uh, have been completed, guys. Time for you to... Tell us what would you play, Bishop B seven or A six? Let's start with Samai. Samai, what's your move? Bishop B seven, just developing. Okay, Bishop B seven is Samai's move. Biswa. Yeah, Bishop B seven. And Vaibhav. Uh, A six. A six. Okay. Yakob, why A six? So uh, I think right now uh, White has an option. If the knight comes to B five and then comes to B six, anyhow. uh exchanging it would bring the queen also to a very active square after that uh on the other hand if i had go to b7 i was thinking if my bishop goes to b7 and captures on and threatens to capture on e4 uh he just comes out with the knight on d2 and saves the pawn and then develops his bishop on the longer diagonal anyway so i might just help him do what he exactly wants <laughs> and also you gave two options so i want to consider <laughs> so that helped me <laughs> Yeah, this thing. Okay, so so let me. I I played a six, so very well done. Um, let me explain why not bishop b seven. So bishop b seven is a, is a is a decent enough move, but here um, practicality is very very important. So I have played the white side of this also many times, and here knight b five is a very strong move. And uh, it is in, indeed, as uh, Weibach uh, said, that the knight is, is threatening to come to d6, and we have also bishop f4 coming. And this is uh, very dangerous. And even if 
white takes a pawn on, on e4, black, uh, or black takes a pawn, white will get a lot of compensation on the dark squares. And it's very difficult for black to control the dark squares. Um, the only reason for playing bishop b7 that would be acceptable is if your opening preparation is really world class. So I, I won against a very strong player, uh, Scottish player. I won in 19 moves, one with white in this, in this line. It's really very dangerous. Uh, but I also tried it in blitz against Sam Shanklin, um, who is uh, who's my student and is also a teacher at, at the academy. Um, and he, uh, he played d5. Knight uh, bishop, how was it? So knight bishop b7, b5. knight b5, d5. Yeah. And then here I played bishop f4, and then he played queen f6 immediately. And this is preparation at absolute top level. So here, uh, not fearing knight c7, but just seeing that the hanging white pieces are more important. But if you don't know this, you shouldn't go for something like this. You, you yeah. get, uh, get into terrible trouble and you sit and essentially play against uh, often computer preparation mm -hmm. uh, yeah. rather than playing the opponent. So I played a6, which is a move that I always want to make in this structure anyway, because my queen belongs to c7. This right. is uh, very, very typical in these structures. The queen needs a square and it's c7. So I always have to play a6 at some point. So doing it first makes a lot of sense. So so should we give one point to Vaibhav and uh, no points to Samaya and Biswa? Uh, unless, unless they can swear that the new queen f6, I think that would be <laughs> the correct choice. I, 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 I have a question. Yes. Why don't we let him make his night moves? Because he's wasting his moves on one, one particular um, uh, piece. Why don't we develop and castle kingside? Like, why are these are only two options? Why can't we play uh, bishop uh, f5 for say in the last uh, position? You you mean after bishop b7, knight why, b5? Why play uh -huh. bishop f7 at all? No, no, he, he wants to play bishop c5. Ah, bishop c5. Ah, sorry. Yeah. I, I think here, uh, let's say white plays bishop b2. And then what, you want to play knight f6 or something like this? Yeah. Um, here you will probably f be met by e5. And uh, uh, you're not in very good control over your dark squares. And here maybe you have to play knight d5. And I could also play queen, queen g4 uh, here. White can, can establish some threats. And this is a this is a something to understand about uh, the Sicilian defense, because in the opening, what we uh, we teach uh, beginners or, or people who are new to chess is it's really really important to just get your pieces out, got just get your pieces out, just get your pieces out, and this is true. But if we go back a little bit uh, here, black here in these kind of systems where it's sort of holding back, you also see it in the modern defense, you see it in some other openings, that blacks start by establishing the pawn structure and then develop the pieces. The reason why this is possible is because there's a distance between the two armies. And that means that white is not able to come in and create threats. So black will very quickly play a6 and in a few moves also play d6. So he establishes this structure, which is very difficult to attack. There are not really any squares white can attack it from. And then black can put all the pieces in good squares uh, before getting attacked. And white will have to develop all the pieces and, and start pushing pawns before it can create problems. The fact that white is developing the pieces and then pushing pawns actually uh, does not come uh, come to any greater benefit than pushing the pawns and then developing the structure because of the distance between the two armies. And this is really important to stress. So sometimes when we play black in the Sicilian and we make all these pawn moves, you can see it's at this point only pawn moves. 
Um, we do, if we are <coughs> not cautious, we do run into some very big beatings and very short games. Uh, that's uh, the real downside to uh, to playing the Sicilian. Sometimes you get mated very, very quickly, and it's happened to so more or less everyone who plays the Sicilian. Um, so here, uh, Jakob went for a6, just stopping knight b5 ideas, bishop b2, and he puts his queen on c7, uh, not really developing pieces, but uh, as he said, yeah, there is distance between the pieces, so it's fine right now, bishop d3, check on b4. Yeah, I should probably explain this move uh, very quickly, it's very instructive. Yeah. So the idea is very simple. Uh, I just want to put my bishop on e7. And white will probably put the pawn on c4 anyway. But because I give this check, then white will be able, will, will be having to play c4 uh, quite a bit earlier because the pawn on c3 is, is a bit silly. So it's just a little thing to make sure that there's nothing in the long diagonal from bishop on b2 down toward g7. There's no trick. With, with the knight b5 or bishop, followed by bishop g7 or anything like this. Very so just nice. a very good safe move. I, basically, I'm surprised in the opening and I'm trying to avoid losing quickly. So I just want to set up a normal structure. Castles, knight f6. And now he played f4 uh, and usually f4 threatens e5. So Jakob stopped it with d6. Knight now he went... played a bit unusual move, knight d2. Here it was more natural to play c4 and knight c3 and put the knight on the more active square, but okay, he played knight e2. Mm -hmm. Bishop b7, and he finally went c4. And here we get to maybe some of your other sessions have been, the moves have been very concrete you've been asked about. Here we come to a little more abstract thing. You have to develop an idea of, of uh, how you want to play the next few moves. So you have to develop a little mini plan. So we should probably give them three minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we'll see what you come up with. So you, you guys have to come up with some kind of a plan here for black. Yeah, I'm Viper? not sure if I was getting one or half for the previous one though, because he had already mentioned and my plan wasn't right. So. You it out like sure, I will ask him. Uh, Jakob, uh, one point for the last one for Weibo A6. Does it look good? Yeah. You know, or sometimes you I can also make a give half for the wrong reasons, but it's still the right move. <laughs> okay. It's a very interesting position, some kind of a hedgehog like structure where. Black is sort of confined to the last three ranks. White has more space, but you need to come up with some kind of an idea here. And then a move. So the, so the way this works, Jakob, is that uh, they when they suggest a move, if, if it makes sense, you give them one point. It could be more than one move. But if it makes semi-sense, like half of it, then you can also give half a point or else zero. So that's how the scoring is. And, and, and you somehow presume that I have not watched every episode. <laughs> I, I was, well, I, I just made sure... <laughs> Did you did you see them? Did you uh, which one did you enjoy? I especially liked episode uh, the one with Tanya. I especially like that. Ah, you you liked the one. With She's Tanya. a good friend of mine. So. Yeah, yeah.
Actually, this is quite a tricky position. Even I uh, am not so sure what is to be done. But let's see if uh, Vaibhav, Samai and Biswa come up with interesting ideas. Also in the chat, guys, you need to think as to what should Black be doing here. And what would be the right play? Okay, guys, time is up. So let's start with Vaibhav this time. Vaibhav, what's your move? E5. E5 is Vaibhav's move. Biswa? Knight B7. Knight B to D7. B D7. Samai? E5 with the idea of uh, blocking that uh, bishop, both the bishops, in fact. Okay. So two guys Oops. have said E5 and one knight D7. So, Peshwar, how do, how do you see your next few moves going? What are you, you wanting to do? I just saw that uh, C5 is a good square for the knight. So I wanted to put it there. And uh, maybe I can, I don't know, this sounds stupid, but maybe I can castle queen side. You should probably not have said that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I I was seeing some <laughs> game yesterday where uh, the black black castle queen side in similar structure, not similar, different, but uh, still, that's where that idea came. Yeah, that's my all all my ideas. That's it. In general, the the, the king is uh, is best placed uh, behind the pawns, and here you already move the pawns forward, so you would have to try to move the king forward then, also. Uh, there's. Have you uh, been introduced to the concept of the hook? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So you can see here because black has advanced pawns on the queen side, when if white start pushing the pawns, the opening of the position would happen quite quickly. Um, but I think it's not so easy for black to open the position on the king side if he was trying to cast long and play g5. White can always play f5 and keep the position closed. Um, but in general, there's just many advanced pawns and uh, leading to many squares that need defending on the queen side. If the but, king is there. But there are pieces around our king, so I thought it will be safe. And, but, okay, so that's uh, castling queen side is bad. I get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. But it's, uh, of course, uh, you know, the thing about uh, learning chess is uh, to experiment and try things is really important. And if there's something that you 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 don't really understand, then uh, uh, you can try it in in your game. So you can also try to analyze it. And and today we have these uh, fantastic tools we didn't have when when I was uh, at your tender age, uh, like computers and so on. So we can put in and we can try to make moves and sort of like uh, play and ask the computer what happens. And if we did that. Uh, you know, with some of these wonderful tools that Saka he sells, then uh, very, very quickly, then uh, we would see, oh, there are all these beautiful options for uh, for white of, let's say if we had castle long, the queen comes to e2, pawn to b4 and c5, and everything opens up and a6 will be uh, open and the whole game will be centered about uh, also a4, a5 can come. And we cannot keep the position closed with black here. Yeah, I would have uh, castled king side after thinking about queen side for a while. You know, to think about stupid <laughs> things and then do sensible things, that that is the that is the actions of a wise man. Those who think they will not think stupid thoughts when they get older, they uh, they're de delusional. They will just not act on them as fast. This is the main thing that comes from experience. So uh, Saga, we should uh, we should give some points, yeah. Half, half point to Biswa for night. Why? No, 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 <laughs> is, no, no, no. Is it the right move? It's not what I played, but it's not okay. worse. Okay. So we so, give him one full point, yeah, Jakob. Yeah, one full point. Yeah. But but on the other hand, let's uh, let's look at e5 for a moment. Yeah, let's look at e5. So so there there are two reasons why this is the wrong approach. The first reason is why is ahead in development. This is a. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't understand cricket. The rules are too complex for me. Do you understand football? 
Yes. You understand the rules a little bit. So basically, it's like uh, starting, uh, you know, to play football, start for an attack, while half the players are still sitting on the bench. We need the players on the pitch before we can uh, can do anything. That's the one thing. The other thing is for black, we will be castling kingside. This is for sure, as we have just debated. So the weakest square in the black position is going to be G7. No, no piece is defending this. See, Saka, he uses these colors differently than I do. For me, weakness is always green. Really? Uh, yeah, it's a, I, I developed my own, own color system. So okay. weaknesses so are green. Your color, yeah, okay. <laughs> weaknesses are green. Uh, the opponent's intention is red. The warning, warning. And yellow is the worst place piece. Okay, so here the knight comes to a f5. And it will be very strong there. And if we play g6, we're further weakening many dark squares uh, around our king. And we don't want this. We don't want this fantastic piece there. Actually, if we go back uh, a little bit here and a little back again here, this pawn structure for black, what is it, it is uh, created for is actually just to make it impossible for the white pieces to come too close. It is a, quite a defensive structure. So I actually, I made quite an elaborate plan at this point, and I was on, under no illusion that, that uh, anyone else would, would do this. Uh, but I decided to play against white's bad piece. So one of the white pieces is not very strong. Uh, and this is, I, I know that some very strong players will, will say, no, it's much more complicated than that. But just on a principal level, one of the pieces could be played against long term. Mm -hmm. so, so, guys, which piece is it? Which piece is it? Yeah. Also in the chat, guys, one of White's pieces can be played against here, not the strongest piece. Which one is it according to you? And this is not not really for points, but it's uh, just so that I will give a bonus point. Why not? Okay. Okay. That you are a knight on d two. Yeah. Also, the bishop on d three, I guess, is. But it's yes. The king on g one. <laughs> Very weak piece, I think. Straight for the head. <laughs> I think bishop d2, if it can be blocked, then maybe. So generally, you, you will know that a bad bishop is a bishop that's limited by its own pawns. So this is why uh, I thought, what if I try a strange strategy of playing against the bishop? So that would be yellow in my terminology, Saga. I know. Okay. Got, it. <laughs> Got it. So this is opponent's piece, worst place piece, yeah? Yeah, open is worst place piece. Of course, the bishop is not badly placed, and uh, it's potentially white wants to make an attack on, on h7 after a castle. But what I was trying to do here was I was trying to go for a strategy where that bishop would not be good long term. And this was uh, one of the many ways to play the position. Uh, so I played knight c6 here. And the okay. next few moves, we can see my, my plan. So he plays queen e2. I take okay. him d4. Before, before we move forward, uh, uh, shall we give the points? I think uh, knight bd7 for Biswa was one. Yeah. And also bishop d3 is a bad piece was mentioned by Vaibo. Yeah. So we give him one more. It should just be half a point. One second. You said that was for no points. That why I, that's why I gave stupid answer. Now you can't give points. No, no, no. This is not allowed. <laughs> he said, he said that is for no points. But Jakob said it is no, for no, he points. Said points. He said it's for I, points. Then though, I also said this. See, you either three. get points or you get laughs. You can't get both, this one. <laughs> <laughs> you went for the laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, one more thing, Jakob. Uh, so if we push e6 and if the knight lands on f5, uh, yes. and if we castle, but the thing is, like that knight cannot be kicked away by any pawns. Is why you feel like uh, that's not a. The, the, it's it's essentially it will just be uh, there to deal with for a long time. Yeah, because there's no way to kick it away. Except there's no way to kick it away without weakening your position. Yeah. And also, whenever he wants, he can take your bishop, which you need for your dark square structure. 
Okay. So so this bishop is although not very active on e7, yeah. it's it's an important piece, right? Yes, but at this moment it cannot go anywhere. So uh, the knight is stronger because it has a lot of potential to help with that attack. For example, let's say the queen comes to g3 very quickly and would be very unpleasant, uh, already creating threats. Um, so if we were to ever play e5 to make the bishop on d3 limited, this is not a bad idea. But allowing the knight on f5 is not a good idea. So what we see in the game is I actually wanted this structure, but not under these circumstances. And this is the thing with chess that makes it uh, uh, so interesting that what is good in one situation, if you make a very minor, diff minor change, is totally catastrophically bad. And uh, evaluating these things, uh, sometimes the best players in the world get confused. Hmm. Okay, got it. So knight c6 was played by Jakob, queen e2. He took, took, and castles. And here he went for the move, king to, uh, white went for the move, king h1. And now uh, came the move, knight to d7. Yeah, this move I want to explain just for a moment. Yeah. So my, my idea here is I want to play bishop f6 at some point. And then after bishop takes and knight takes, then I want to play e5. And then uh, I have managed to exchange some pieces, so I'm less likely to get checkmated, I hope. And then uh, the idea is the bishop on d3 will be bad. Mm -hmm. Maybe I might even play e5 and keep the dark squared bishops on, but in, ideally, I, if I put all my pawns on the dark squares, I would like not to have a bishop. But then on the other hand, I should also be careful not spending too much time on these things, because then I can be uh, subject to a, a quick attack. Yeah. Uh, so these things here now, when I look at it now, I, I, I feel that hopefully I'm wiser uh, and... Uh, here I feel, okay, uh, maybe this is a, a, a bit too optimistic for black uh, to some extent. Uh, uh, just um, a question. Uh, after bishop f6, the idea, uh, if if he plays e5, opening his light square, is that, and then if you take, take, it's, is, it, is it not good for white? You would have more pieces uh, to attack h7. Uh, but for example, here rook e1, uh, as Saka puts up, is a is a very reasonable move, which means that here I would be a little uh, cautious about uh, playing uh, bishop f6 because my pieces are not in the game yet. I would definitely think rook a d8 is most likely of what I would play, because here have e5, pawn takes, pawn takes. I would have uh, some options like knight c5, and make exchanges. We actually get the structure in the game, and uh, the ideas you're you're mentioning are absolutely part of the game. You know, mm. uh, you you might know uh, of Simon Williams already. He's a very famous uh, chess author, and uh, made videos and, uh, and these kind of things. He's known as the Ginger GM because of his hair, and he's sort of embraced it fully. and uh, And he's a good friend of mine also. Um, yeah, but uh, Jakob, one question I had was because the knight on d4 has been exchanged, don't yes. you think now e5 is uh, possible because now there's no knight jumping to f5? It is, but right. I, 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 I didn't want to make this commitment too soon. Mm -hmm. uh, my plan was to try to say, you know, play knight d7, so e5 doesn't come with a tempo. It always this is, this is a little, little more advanced. Uh, this is kind of the, the thing I, I teach to people rated around 2100 to 2300 level. So here, uh, so what do I play? Castle, King h1, knight d7, right? Yeah, King h1, knight d7. So e I'm expecting e5 to come at any point. Yes. This is, so it's not just because I want to play bishop f6, but also e5 is absolutely central mm -hmm. to his idea of creating attack. Now, if e5 comes with a threat on the knight and I have to uh, move away, my response to e5 is forced. So in two, three moves, when, when, he when I was expecting him to try to play e5, 
it will come with a tempo on my night and I don't have the flexibility to react according to where the pieces are. So I would rather play knight d7 first, anticipate that e5 is coming. And then when he plays e5, I will have a freedom of choice. I will delay my choice. So here in many variations, it will make no difference at all. But uh, it's just very good habit of keeping the choice and the flexibility as much as possible. And uh, I can show many positions, uh, which will not be today, where, where it really, really matters. But if I just delay my choice as much as possible, but I do the things I have to do anyway first, I will have a, you know, this is a, how, how do you say it? It's a, it's a responsible approach because I'm uh, able to respond as I want. Okay, he actually did play e5. Yeah, he played, you took. He and took he back took back with the, with the pawn. pawn. And so this is double edged. Uh, the pawn on e5 at the moment is squeezing me. And if he managed to create an attack, that would be, uh, be a very powerful thing of keeping my pieces away from the defense. On the other hand, if he doesn't manage to create a strong attack, then long term, the pawn is a little bit on its own. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I played rook a d8. Rook a d8. Uh, if you don't mind, Jakob, there was one more question that was asked in the chat, which was, what if here white would have gone e5 directly? Would, he, would it have made any difference uh, in your take or it would have been the same position? Um, I think uh, maybe I can take take and play bishop c5. Take, take. Ah, uh, because the king is still on g1 and not on yeah. h1. Oops, the queen sorry. e5 is maybe sorry, not sorry. first. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, bishop c5. And now uh, you can't take here because bishop d4 is a check. While if takes, it comes with a check and then you can move your knight. Yeah, here I would have to, to think actually if this, if this works for black because after knight d7, maybe here uh, we should make a bonus point here. Control F the, the board for a moment. Uh, white to play here? Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll give a, a moment here. So uh, I'm not sh not sure how good it is, but there there is a an a active tactic. move here. White to play, guys. Uh, what do one you One minute. Think? Okay, one minute here. Do you, do you see a tactic? Uh, yeah. Some tactic is there, yes. Uh, okay. I also see the refutation, but the one, one step at a time. Can we guess? When all three are ready, I think. Okay, timer is there. Okay. Very interesting. Yes. Guys, in the chat, what to do with white? Do you see a tactic? And whether it's good or not, that also you should assess. OK, guys, time is up. Uh, let's start with Biswa. Uh, I was just calculating Bishop at 7 check. And uh, king takes uh, rook uh, f4, uh, sorry, queen uh, h5 check first. King goes in and then rook f4, trying to create a mating threat. And uh, I guess then uh, queen takes uh, on e5. That's how much I get. This is what you saw, okay? Uh, also, what about F, oh. F5 also looks looks good for black, but uh, but Queen ah, E5 is, is best. Queen E5 is best, and it is not working. Best. Yeah, uh, Weibo. I thought uh, if Bishop takes, uh, then Rook takes on F7, and if now Rook takes, then we go check and pick up the Rook, but uh, we go check. No. Oh yeah, I just can't <laughs> Rook is not angry. Don't don't pick up anything. <laughs> yeah. 
and pick up the groceries, yeah? <laughs> Samai? Yeah, I also saw bishop takes f7, king takes. And here I was calc- I was calculating queen h5 check or maybe knight e4 first. So I was okay. stuck here. Le- here, here thing uh, that's very important to always be aware of. Uh, this is known as a non uh, dictum from the book Secret of Practical Chess. This is a beautiful, beautiful book for sale uh, most most surely on uh, the Chess Base India website <laughs> 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 and all good bookstores everywhere uh, from from one of our main competitors, uh, Gambit Chess. You should always be aware of the unprotected pieces. So you can see the knight on d7 is unprotected. So here the problem uh... is uh, queen d3 check. Queen d3 check. Okay, so let's say king g8 and queen takes d7. I think, uh, Jakob, they never, uh, like whenever they sack on h7, the next move that comes to their mind is queen h5. That's why they were looking in that direction, not queen d3. Yeah, what, what I teach a lot to, uh, to my students and uh, at uh, killerchesstraining.com, we have students of all level and we have the best coaches and the best prices and everyone should go to the website immediately. Um, <laughs> But now rook d8. So if you play rook, yeah, the first thing. then 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 queen d6 probably, and uh, no rook d8. Then we have uh, hanging, no? b7. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so yeah. let's go back here. Just one moment. Stop here. Control F, and uh, maybe we'll just give this as a bonus for the chat if they very quickly can see the counter tactic here. Because yeah. this is a really instructive tactic. I think Saga even haven't seen it. No, no, I saw it. I saw it. That's why last time I said yes. I saw first Rook D8. I saw B7 is hanging. But then you go for a Desperado. Yes. What what is the meaning of Desperado? When something is hanging, anyway, it's going to die. So why not, you know, take something else and uh, give it up? Ah, Bishop takes G2. Yeah, Bishop G2. And then Rook D8. And the Knight uh, will hang. And the... Black wow. here has a very big advantage. Yeah. Okay, so coming back. Was to definitely the let's let's go back to the program. So uh, with e5 here, I I think uh, this works for this reason. Um, but here, basically, Simon doesn't want to exchange pieces because then uh, we get closer to an end game where the pawn on e5 could be uh, weak. He wants to use his minor pieces to. Uh, uh, yeah, to, to create death and destruction. Yeah. This is the kind of player he is also. Rook d8, bishop c3, and now uh, Jakob made a very interesting move here. He played play the move b5 because it cannot be taken. The bishop on c3 is hanging. So here, rook a c1 was played. And here's your Which next is a bad question. move. This is, this is a bad move. But here, uh, this is a... a, a important positional moment. So I think uh, one and a half minutes. Okay. Sir. So how should we deal with the now white is threatening to take on b5? Yeah, so the threat is c takes b5 and <coughs> white to move. How do you deal with this threat? Guys, in the chat, you have 19 seconds to find the answer. Wait, uh, black to move, right? Black, yeah, to, black move. to play. Black to move. Yeah. Black to play. Rook a c1 was the move. Yeah. How do you respond? So, Saka, tell me, how is my favorite person in all of India, your wife, doing? <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Very well. She is. Um, She's not sure uh, what are we doing because we are sleeping at 4 a.m. in the night and waking up at 12, 12 p.m. But <laughs> she's doing okay. She's good. 12 p.m. Is that midnight? So no, no. You're, you're only awake from midnight till 4. <laughs> no, no. That's 12 p.m. Uh, we wake up, yeah, like in the afternoon. So I, I'm, I'm not sure what, isn't that 12 a.m.? I'm never no, no, sure no. what that is. No, PM is, uh, it turns uh, in the afternoon, 12 PM. This, in the this, night this is, is 12 AM. This is very educational for me. You know, I have a British passport, but I'm from Denmark and we use the 24 hour system. You know, the uh, other one, it always confuses me. How can it be one o'clock? It was 12 just a moment ago, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, decision time, guys. Yeah. 
this time guys you didn't have much time i can see from biswas face like i have not thought anything here <laughs> yeah, i was uh, understanding am pm guys <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with uh, him <laughs> anyway yeah, sure yeah <laughs> what's your mind? i'll just uh, say what what's going to um, be for so uh, okay b4 is biswas move what about samai what's your move bishop a3 uh, bishop a3 okay and vaibhav b4 b4 okay yeah go bishop a3 okay so so bishop a3 after uh, let's say rook cd1 i will ask you what is the future of that bishop on a3 at the moment white is maybe even threatening b4 and your bishop will be be trapped but it has no function there uh, you know it's uh, beside the fact that it was threatening to take the rook then uh, bearing uh, great luck this is not going to happen <laughs> <laughs> you know so uh, uh, yeah, this is this is one of the developments of of uh, of improving in chess is that yes you can put traps but it should not be moves that uh, are obvious for the opponent to avoid and uh, where if he avoids them then it has a very negative impact on your position so here i was, but uh, after this i was thinking b4 our yeah, bishop is definitely uh, trapped then bishop to a1 and now we look at your bishop on a3 and we maybe laugh <laughs> <laughs> saga we don't give minus points right <laughs> <laughs> but he's already on zero <laughs> <laughs> but but i think one of the problems that uh, especially samai faces is that whenever he sees uh, an active move which attacks something he goes for it like he he really wants to play moves which are forcing in nature is this is very human and uh... There, there are basically two types of uh, of players. There are players who thinks very much about structure and long term things, and then there are people who are very active. So, when you have players like uh, let's let's say we have uh, Ganguly, who's uh, or Atiban, you know, both of them are very good friends of mine, very very strong players. Uh, they both are incredibly active players. and they, they they see these active things first but they um, they have to learn at some point also to see the long term consequences of moves and uh, when i was working with uh, ganguly this was what we were focusing on and uh, he is so incredibly smart that we only had like a few sessions and he just got it like <laughs> re- really incredible person um a really really smart guy So here uh, the move b4 is right. Oh, uh, b4 full points to some uh, to Biswa and Vaibhav. So they go to to How does it feel Samir? It feels, <laughs> feels like I should have slept only. I am anyway zero. <laughs> yeah, you, you should not not get up at midnight, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here uh b4 So there are two reasons why b4 is the right move. The first one is that we can see that the whole white position was perfectly geared to take on b5. Only he didn't get the chance earlier because uh, uh his bishop was hanging so he played rook c1 defending the bishop and now he wants to take on b5 and he I think simply didn't didn't anticipate b4. Uh so you could say if if you comedians uh, owned him in this case and uh So the one thing is that uh, all of white pieces were placed perfectly to take on b5 and it would open up for the pieces. The second thing is after bishop b2 we can see that the knight on c5 uh is really very well placed. So here uh, the white pawns they are unable to disturb the knight. It has this really nice safe spot where it's using the white pawns as a shield. And here we can see again my strategy of playing against the the light squared bishop that it's limited at least on the queen side by drawn pawns. So if it was ever able to start an attack, you know, on h7, it would be great, but at the moment the pieces are not ready. Yeah. So white so played bishop, bishop c2. c2. Here I played a next best move. I should have played rook d7 and rook f8. My rook on f8 is my worst place piece. um uh, but i thought you know 
I'll just play a5, I'll defend my pawn on b4. It's not the best move, but I think it's really the only little mistake I, I made in this game. It's not the only thing I missed, but it's the only time I made a, a real mistake. So here, white played knight to f3. And here we should think again about how white should play. Uh, sorry, black should play. And favorite right. moment of the game. Actually, your this, favorite moment of the yes, game. Yes, this is the favorite moment of the game for me. So, guys, black to play. Uh, how much time should we give you? Uh, let's uh, have two minutes because these are very much uh, based on feeling. There's not so much for calculation. So today it's sort of thinking. And here the idea is what what is white's plan? A little bit. So if we understand this, we have a better chance. Good. I think when, when Jakob told me this, uh, the move here, it changed my understanding of something in chess. So hopefully it will do to you as well. Uh, black to play. Okay, hey guys, last few seconds left. So please do write down your move. Uh, I mean, f finalize your move. And also in the chat, I hope Samai can open his account here with this move because... I although, have a feeling I got this right. Really? Really? Yeah. Let's see. Let's <laughs> and see. don't laugh, man, please. <laughs> Sorry, you're a comedian who tells me not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 do, I do like this joke, you know. Uh, when I grew up, every, uh, I told people I want to be a comedian. Everyone's laughing. Ha! No one's laughing now. <laughs> my one of my favorite jokes of all time. <laughs> Okay, so let's start this time with Samai because he is confident he'll get the full point. H6. H6 is Samai's move. Okay, uh, yeah. Jacob is smiling. I think it's it. that's it. <laughs> well, maybe you get a point for that. Uh, Vaibo? F6. F6 is Vaibo's move. Uh, Biswa? H6. H6 as well. Okay, so both all three of them are going to experience a shift in their chess understanding perhaps but oh, maybe God. what about their move uh, Jakob is it good is it any good well I uh, you did tell me that it was three comedians and uh, I, I my presumption that they would go for laughs over points was absolutely confirmed on this move <laughs> <laughs> okay so he, here in this situation uh, black does not have a great urgency to move the pawns in front of the king all it would do is uh, it will create weaknesses because you can see where the pawns are now they all defend the squares right in front of the king. I am not, long term, I am not against moving pawns in front of the king. But I don't want to do it in a way that opens up lines. So the moment, let's try to put h6 on the board here. The moment you have played h6, now any threat on this diagonal with the, where we have the light squared bishop will, will, will force you to play g6. And every move time you move forward, something there would be a potential of some threat uh, creating. So this is, uh, is, is quite unpleasant. The same thing with F6. Um, at this point here, uh, I think the weakness of the E6 pawn is a, is a very unfortunate thing. Um, now, these moves are not totally bad, so there's no minus points. Um, but let's try to move the pawn back. What White actually wanting to do in this position 
is to maneuver the knight, the knight from f3 to d4 to b5. And then later, I hope to put it on d6. And if I have to take it, I will open up for the, the bishop on b2. And it can be very, very powerful. So here I did something that, uh, and I did it immediately, and my opponent was totally, totally shocked uh, that there are many, objectively, there are many, many decent moves if you put it into a computer in this position. But strategically, my move, uh, I think here really changed the game for my opponent. He was thinking he could try to create an attack. And after this move, he realized there's no attack. Bishop so takes I took, on F3. I play Bishop takes on F3. What? <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> should we give half a point here, Saga? <laughs> no, 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 I don't want. I got only Please because. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's but, let's not give that. Well, it's was half point, and uh, he can give it to you if he wants. Uh, I will not give it or take it. <laughs> I, I, I have I have never seen a comedian show sympathy to a, a competitor, so <laughs> I was pretty confident of the outcome of that decision. Yes. Uh, so here, my bishop on b7 is indeed very strong, but there, there are two aspects of this. First is, by taking the knight, a lot of white's attacking potential disappears. And the second thing is, uh, okay, there was this uh, idea, but the second thing is, I'm still playing against the bishop on c2. At some point, I want a position where that bishop uh, is just irrelevant and can't even be exchanged. Now, because I take away my light squared bishop and my knight is placed on a dark square and probably will be there for a long time, it's very difficult to imagine that the light squared bishop can ever exchange itself. Okay, here I played rook d2. Why I have one question. Have... I have yes. one question. Uh, when you exchange this bishop, you also gave up your attacking chances, right? Yes, my, my long-term uh, strategy is to win the end game. Um, I, I, I'm i trying to slowly dominate him and, and win uh, in the long term. So your whole idea is based on the weak e5 pawn right now? Yes. Okay. okay. But also based on the, the bishop not being very strong and my knight being very strong. Okay. So it's, it's uh, really a very, very long term thing. And I'm a, very much an attacking player. And uh, the original games yeah. I mentioned when, when Saka... Uh, asked me to be on. We're both attacking uh, games, but we thought, okay, let's uh, let's try to, everyone has a brilliant attacking game. Let's try to have a more technical game here. And uh, and when we had the two or three years ago, uh, this was Amruta's favorite game. So I, I had to choose. Jakob, one question is, it's very difficult to understand why this bishop is bad. You know, you said that, yes, these are the pawns here. But when you have such a free open diagonal with the bishop facing against the king, uh, calling it a bad piece just looks wrong, yeah? Well, but I will be playing g6 at some point. This is the point. And I think it's uh, without the knight, it's going to be incredibly difficult for white to... Uh, uh, to actually do anything else but look at this g6 pawn as a limitation. It's just going to dominate the bishop. So the bishop's going to find it very difficult to get a, a good square and, and create threats against anything. Right. Also, so I'm, you play, had, I'm playing, uh, playing around it. Hmm. Playing around it. Yeah, got it. I'm trying to win uh, on the dark squares. Uh, also, I've you had a once uh, mentioned that if there is no knight in the uh, sort of attacking zone, it's very difficult to create an attack. Yeah, from that point of view also, this move makes a lot of sense. Would that would that make sense? It's correct. It's a uh, it's what the uh, graph he taught Salgado and Taro, Salgado taught me, but only later after this game. Hmm. But uh, you, you cannot create an attack without knights, so it's very difficult. So therefore, take off the knights, and your king is much safer. Yeah. Uh, I, yes, I had one question. Yeah. Yes. The thing is, uh, right now in the black camp, uh, the e7 bishop is not really doing much yet. Like I feel like a little limited. Is the, is that a concern for you? Like, do you think that the bishop is limited first of all? And if yes, then like, what are your plans regarding the bishop, though? Well, I don't want to give away any free points for later. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> so, cool. But yes, uh, your observation is absolutely right. 
and this is a uh, this is certainly a, a concern for Black here. But actually, Black is playing very much for structure, and then later on, the pieces will play well within the structure. While White has given some structural concessions to a free piece play, and both strategies are absolutely valid. Uh, and in this case here, at the moment, the position is still equal. Um, so okay, let's uh, I was, move a uh, bit faster. I Rook. tried playing Sicilian Sicilian for a month. I got so frustrated by the bishop on e7 doing nothing that I stopped playing it. <laughs> I really got frustrated. And... Well, you, you, yeah. The, the thing with the, the bishop on e7 is uh, very much it's a defending piece. It's uh, almost on the bench, coming out uh, only in extra time. So uh, yeah, yes. So, so uh, Queen f4, yeah, yeah, rook f2 was maybe better, but the uh, black's just a little bit comfortable. I'll play rook back to d7. Uh, and he played rook f3. Yeah, and white, white is definitely wanting to create an attack. I can see that uh, this this is the the, the Chennai uh, style of chess. Chennai. Everyone, yeah, everyone wants to give checkmate. There's, they, they, there's only one guy from Chennai who doesn't try to give checkmate. Uh, <laughs> it's difficult to, to think actually because everyone is aggressive. Sashikiran, maybe? No. Sashikiran, yes. The, the, the smallest and the strongest uh, of, of uh, the grandmaster from Chennai, if you avoid, uh, you know, if you talk about humans, there's uh, gods we don't talk about in this, this case here. Ah, yeah. No Vishia. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here, uh, next question, uh, and we give uh, two minutes, Jakob? No, this is, this, is, this is three minutes. This is the most important move of the game. Okay. And my opponent clearly had not, not anticipated it, and he was in shock. Is this a classical game? Yes. This is classical game, yes. British Championship 2007. How long did it take uh, to make this move? 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. I was just checking if you took five minutes and you're giving us three minutes. <laughs> no, but uh, my my opponent didn't see it coming though at all. Got it. Got it. Guys, in the chat, try to think about what to do. White pieces are getting very menacing on the king side. Rook, queen, bishop already into the attack. So what do you do here with black? Jakob, does your uh, chess, uh, you know, the skill at chess academy, do they take like 1300s asking for a friend? Oh, absolutely. We have a uh, <laughs> of, of uh, very different uh, strengths. We have some grandmasters as members and we have, uh, um, if you go to our website, for example, you can uh, read a testimonial from a nine-year-old unrated boy who was a very, very happy member also. Wow. It's, um, and we have lessons every day. And it's possible to, uh, if you cannot participate in them live, it's possible to uh, watch them for, uh, I think, 10 days or two weeks afterwards as recordings via the website. Cool. It's, uh, and we have, uh, every week we have homework uh, done at two levels. Uh, we have one which we call the, the killer homework, which is brutal. This week, Sam Shanklin, who is, uh, you know, just won this big tournament on Chess 24 in front of Gelfand, Ivancho, Dominguez, and all these guys. He made seven out of 12. And uh, 
then we have something we call friendly homework, which really is friendly, but also still aims for, for many instructive uh, things. I think homework is one of the key uh, aspects of killer chess training. Yeah? A lot of homework. Well, it's ju just one. We have, uh, you know, we have really a list of, of, of fabulous coaches. Uh, we have um, Sam Shanklin, who U.S. champion, two Olympic gold medals. Uh, and may maybe he's the strongest chess player in the world, uh, providing chess training. Uh, we have Alexander Motilev, who was European champion and uh, also is a coach of the Russian national team. We have Chivarinov now, who is, uh, uh, you know, a very, very strong player in his own right, but also was the second, uh, main second for world champion to Palov when he was in his, uh, in his prime for seven years. We have, uh, yeah, many other really, really good guys, uh, good trainers. Uh, Amazing. And then we have, we have me, who I get to do coaching as well because I'm one of the owners. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> You know, we have a super chat by Adiban here. Uh, Adiban is in the chat and he writes, please pick one of the comedians whom he thinks has potential to become GM at Yako <laughs> I okay, think this, I, I, Adiban I would, is trolling, I, but... I would, I would say the comedian with, with the greatest uh, potential in chess that, uh, that I know is probably Adiban. Adiban. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he has a great sense of humor. So, Jakob, time is up here. Uh, let's begin with Vaibhav. Uh, Vaibhav, what's your move? I bought you guys so much time, man. <laughs> no, I could not bring in. I don't think I have a good move, but... Uh, well, you have to make a move. It's always yeah. better to make a bad move than to make move, no move at all. Yeah, I'll just go Rook D8 is what I was last thought again. This I, one? This the last thing I thought. Or this yeah. one? Sorry, Rook F D8. But then this pawn? Yes. I know. That's what I would say. I was that's why I was like, I don't know. I mean, I I just I was calculating this that if it actually makes sense. But uh, because I will get doubled uh, on that file and somehow that bishop if I can remove, then that's a great threat. And I remember him mentioning that he wants to play against the bishop. I was trying okay. to think if there's anything. But uh, I don't know, I couldn't think of anything. The this problem is, the is queen takes f7, king h8, and here uh, I think uh, yeah. rook h3, and you probably have to resign uh, very, very yeah. shortly. Yeah. Rook takes h7, mate is threatened. There's nothing on d1 because the bishop on c2 is there. And after yeah. h6, we have mate in two with rook takes h6 and queen h7. Uh, what about, okay. So after rook h3, I mean, the last thing I heard, like, if rook h3, maybe I'll just remove the bishop to h4. <laughs> Uh, attack on the queen, and then maybe, but then that's it. I mean, but, I but queen h5 there. with double attack on yeah. h7 and h4, and here you are in, in trouble. Yeah, you can play g5 and, and try some resistance here. Maybe, maybe queen h5 instead of rook h3 was better. Then, uh, yeah, this is going to be stronger. What's uh, what's the your move, Biswa? Sorry, going back to the position. Is muted. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, okay, I I also like I couldn't find anything, but I was calculating f5. Okay, Biswas move is f5. Uh, yeah, uh, Samai. Yeah, mine is also f5 with the idea of exchanging queens and going in the end game, like Yakov wanted to. So, uh, Sag, I I think uh, I understand that this is some sort of prank program, right? <laughs> Well, we, 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 in reality here, because I know that there's more Indian grandmasters than I'm able to, uh, to remember of people uh, by now. And first of all, the, the thing, my, my thinking is like Indian comedians, you know, a, peop a, a country where people are so incredibly polite all the time and so well behaved. This, this is, first of all, I find it hard to believe that there would be three of them. And then secondly... These guys have not made any jokes, but they come with grandmaster moves. What is this? <laughs> is this some sort guys. of trick? <laughs> F5, F5 is a beautiful, beautiful move, guys. Uh, I think here we, 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 we have to say this is really impressive. So the idea here is uh, if white doesn't take, which he didn't, then the bishop on, F on C2 is finally very, very limited. 
And uh, we will see in the game what that means. Here, white should take. And then queen takes uh, f4 and rook takes f4. And here I was planning to take with the bishop. bishop. And now we see what I actually want to do with this bishop. I just want to exchange it. And now after this, this exchange, let's say rook takes probably, and rook takes, pawn takes. This is just general idea. Here I still want to play f5. And then now I have this strong past e pawn at some point. And uh, I'm really playing for, for long-term uh, problems. If we, for example, have uh, rook d1 here in a position like this, maybe I can even take and play knight e4 and knight c3. And we can see the pawn on b4 is, has managed to uh, make a big weakness out of the pawn on a2, and I can go and take it. And, uh, and actually, this is really long-term structural thinking. Actually, we didn't think uh, all this. Uh, we, there is just not many moves to be made in that position. There are only two or three moves that can be made. Every other move kills some piece or makes it bad. <laughs> yeah, but still F5 is very, very nice move. And tell, all, tell, me, tell me another move that you'll play in this Rook position. Rook FD8. <laughs> <laughs> Something is hanging. You can't oh, move anything uh, without something hanging. Oh, but queen d8 was a reasonable move, yeah, also. Yeah, queen d8 was suggested by a lot of people in the chat. Got it. Okay. And, and, and that, that's, but, but f5 really uh, manages to uh, ruin all his uh, dreams of attacking. Got it. What if he does not take, like, in that scenario, I think... That happened in the game. Okay. So... Okay, so let's uh, move ahead a little bit. Queen D8. Uh, so uh, okay, so we will not go into any fin all finesses. We'll go to the next moment. Yeah, Rook F2 takes. And by the way, congratulations to Samai. He is off the mark. He got his first point. And here, uh, this really should be a double point. Uh, Thank you, please, sorry. Sagar. That's it. Then yeah, I also get double point. No, no, yeah, you didn't course, have an course. idea after that. No, this was uh, the most important move of the game. Okay, as Jakob says. He is the one who, so uh, Biswa over, overtakes <laughs> overtakes my bow. Oh, by by the way, they both have a very strong, uh, like close fight for the first place over the episode. So every point is important. Summer is just catching up here, uh, but two points is a good score. I'll take it. So f5 and now knight to e4 was played. I think the tactical justification is that takes takes uh, the rook is queen, queen e2. I play uh, play queen d3. I think it's very strong. Queen d3 and after takes, uh, yeah, this, this past pawn is very unpleasant. Then this is just advancing. So uh, queen e2 was played. Now bishop went to c5 and g3. So here uh, black to play. And I should say to people in chat here that there are many good moves in, in a lot of these positions. Uh, it's very difficult to do exercises without having a, a possibility of explaining things in, uh, in strategic games because often many moves are decent. Um, but here, uh, because we also have explained the main strategic idea of the game, I think it's fair enough. So yeah. let's take two minutes here. Yeah, two minutes and quite a complicated uh, decision here, guys. Uh, but you guys found the toughest move in the game, f5. Uh, so let's see if you can find this one as well. Not easy, not easy. I think I think it's this uh, flexibility of thinking that makes grandmasters what they are. You know, they think in one way in one position and then when the nature changes of the position they're quickly able to readjust themselves Sagar, i'm sending you the move on whatsapp oh okay you can say it when he asks no need to show off that you're fast <laughs> no then then i can talk no casually then if i talk and then i blender the people will be like you wasted so much time <laughs>
uh, what am i supposed to do with the move like should i say it's right or wrong no, no, because just keep it keep ah, it okay just keep it ah adiban says after a training session with yakob and gelfand at greens i won my first round robin event called tournament of peace at croatia thanks for that yakob oh, awesome trainer thank you thank you very much yeah we 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 had a uh, camps in was it beautiful camp it's right at the seaside the... oh yeah yeah no it's a fantastic uh, you know uh, my complimentary room had private pool wow so you learn very, very chess nice. and you relax near the beach and then there are training sessions and then you so it's a very nice place to to the thing chess. the thing is you can you can bring your family and it's like you're like okay i'm just going to go and do chess for 8 hours and they're like yeah yeah whatever i'm sitting here by the pool with the free drinks uh, you know and it's all good <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, kalia my partner is uh, was taking everyone on excursions and so on and the happiest participants in the camps was the wives this is the first thing in a time in a chess event that the wives are the happiest amazing guys time is up so why bow this time uh, oh last time you were the first one to answer so let's go with uh, biswa okay this is most likely a blunder but ah uh, oh, can i get just one more second okay we can go with uh, samai uh, queen a8 queen a8 is samai's move here uh, uh, why bow knight c3 knight c3 is why bow's move uh, what about uh, biswa uh i was also thinking queen a8 but i'll go with queen g5 no okay. queen a8 is better queen a8 <laughs> sorry queen a8 <laughs> okay uh, yeah. yakob what are your thoughts on queen a8 why bow's move is knight c3 what it, it, queen a8 is a is a reasonable enough move uh i think uh here white would probably get this is his one chance where uh, he could actually take the knight and there's not a huge tactical problem so he would uh, get rid of the bishop and we would get a, a really uh, complicated position uh, white would exchange uh, rooks and get the king in to, to help with the defense so king g2 and here black's off obviously better but uh, it's just a little more complicated we wanted this move we don't want at all yeah. now uh, here black's probably lost because the uh, pawn is in game because the pawn's going to get surrounded so oh, wouldn't you see. actually instead of taking with the pawn instead on e4 wouldn't you exchange the queens there and there because then you again oh no no I, i i i would not uh not for a second uh, contemplating this so here we would exchange here i'm uh, very worried that uh black's going to be in big trouble in this end game uh even though the pawn is not easy to attack immediately he will white will play king f1 king e2 bishop c1 and bishop e3 uh as as one possibility and black will find it difficult to get the king into the game if the king goes to g6 white will play g4 and there's not really a way in uh the real problem here is that long term uh black will be faced with the possibility of exchanging the the bishops even if he manages to win the e5 pawn in a pawn ending he can he cannot really do anything because the moment the black king goes past the fourth rank white c pawn will go to the end and white can just keep the king on e1 or e2 and and just wait so here black has no real winning chances knight takes on g3 is a like before this it's just a blunder there is like it yeah, is just a blunder yes there's no no it looks yeah, like there should be tactic you know uh, don't worry we will get a tactic in about 4 hours when we get to the end of the game <laughs> uh but no here it's uh, again it's strategically we're playing against the bad bishop so for this reason the absolutely best move in the position is knight c3 wow oh, vaibo well done vaibo back with knight c3 yeah. so Fantastic. here we should not at all be uh, worried about opposite color bishops because we can see that the uh, pawns uh e6 and f5 dominate the white bishop and they're not easy to attack at all and even the white pawns on the queen side dominate the white bishop 
while the pawn on e5 uh, is a very difficult to defend. Now the black has uh, white has no minor pieces to defend it. So if we ended up with an end game with only bishops, white was black would simply uh, take this pawn on e5, and then he would uh, create two pass pawns, marching down in the e and f file. And do you plan to like, uh, if given a chance, would you rather exchange the queens now, like on d2? Um, it it comes up in uh, just a few moves. So here he played rook d1. I played queen a8 check. Uh, second, uh, let me just uh, give Weibo a point for this. He's on three and a half yes. now. Very well played. Well done, sir. Thank you. Uh, check. Queen, a, queen g2. And the reason I don't exchange queens now is because the fight for the d line is very important. So I play queen b8, threatening to take the pawn. So the check was just to get his queen away from the defense of the pawn so I could win a tempo. And he goes back. I think rook e1 he played. I play rook d8. He played uh, queen c6. And here I play queen b6. Very happy to exchange queens. I had not seen queen c6 attacking two of my pieces, but luckily I could defend in any which way. Um, I, the, the game will be available in, uh, in view chess uh, by, by on the website later, so you can see it there. Yeah. Okay, here I'm threatening to invade with the rook to d2, so he plays rook e2, and here we have a very important moment. This is a positional play. It's just, uh, let's just give one and a half minute. Okay. So, Guys, black to play here. What would you do here? Uh, usually, people are very afraid of going into bishop, opposite color bishop positions because it has drawish tendencies. But here, Jakob has gone into it. And because the bishop on c2 is dominated, yeah? Here's trivia for you, Saka. In the three tournaments where I made my three GM norms, yeah, I won uh, drawn opposite color bishop endings in all three of them, and then this tournament is the tournament where I uh, I surpassed twenty five hundred, and uh, officially became a grandmaster, and mm -hmm. on my birthday even, wow, to, uh, to make it perfect, and um, uh, here I also win this opposite color bishop endgame. By the way, Adiban has sent one more super chat. Today, he is, uh, as people in the chat are saying, he still has 1,49,300 rupees left because he recently won 1,50,000 rupees for uh, mentoring two students in comedians on board. One of them was Vaibhav, who finished second, and first was Joel. So, Adiban says, guys, last one for today. My book will be with Quality Chess, which is owned by Jakob. Really excited about it. Yes, yes he's so, going to write a book. So, so just like all my other friends, Atiban is a, a really, really big fan of uh, of my my fiance Kalia. And uh, no, it's 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 fantastic. You know, my, all my friends uh, love my partner. I never hear from them because they just talk straight to her. Uh, and I'm a very antisocial person, so it fits me well. So I stay talk to them. So he's writing a book with uh, quality chess. Yes, yes. Wow. Wow. And is... we are e extremely proud and excited to have him. Yeah, yeah. But, but there's also he... not 700 pager. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're not that excited. <laughs> and also, Adiban has to write the first chapter soon, which he's not doing, as he mentioned. But AD... You should get around to it. Guys, what's the move here? Let's start with Samai. What's your move here? King f7. King f7. Uh, Biswa? Rook d2. Rook d2. Vaibhav? I am very confused. Rook d2 and Bishop e3. But yeah, I'll just go with Rook d2. Sorry, Bishop? Bishop e3. e3. You want to yeah, give a free thinking... piece? No, I thought like if, if, if then my Bishop goes, if then my goes to d2. But then, then c3. Uh, Oh yeah! Thank God I chose the other one. <laughs> I've guessed that the uh, no. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, yeah, it would be a way to try to change bishop. But yeah, again, we have one of these tactics where it only works if your opponent 
does what you want to do, not if he ignores you. So uh, yeah. usually, usually we should try yeah. to find something that advances our position anyway. So of course, Rook D2 and King F7 are not bad moves. Uh, but here, uh, and, and, and it's fair because it's competition among each other. So I know that you're not going to make a huge amount of points, even though you're suggesting decent moves, but it's a strategic thing. So here, the really key point in these kind of positions is that black wants to dominate the light squares with the pawns. So when we have positions with opposite colored bishops, then my bishop here on the dark squares is taking care of the dark squares. But my pawns have to dominate the light squares. From the defender side, it's sort of different because if he can defend half the board or the light squares and keep them safe, he'd be fine. I have to, you know, I'm, I'm strongest on the dark squares because I have the bishop. He's stronger than the light square because he has the bishop. But I have to go in and win the light squares if I want to win the game. Because I want to, you know, be king of the board. Uh, so in this case, I have to see what I have to do with my pawns on the king side. And establishing them on the light squares is the first priority here. I can always play the rook d2 and exchange the rooks. Some positions I don't want to, some positions I do. I'm, rook d2 doesn't ruin the game, but it certainly makes it uh, much more difficult to win. The best move in this position is to play h5. G5 followed by H5 is equally good, but H5 is just good etiquette to start with taking control of the light squares. Mm -hmm. But the, the move order is not so important, but H5 is important. So G5 move. and H5 both, and basically trying to cement your control on light squares by pushing Yes, I'm, I'm trying to slowly squeeze my opponent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, does Samai's King F7 move make sense? Uh, or Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 again, it's fine. But White's, White's uh, plan in this position, if we have to think prophylactically, is to play H3 and G4 to fight for the light squares. I have... We, have to be, we have to be ready for this. Uh, so H5, and if White plays H3 now and G5, G4, yeah, this is actually a very reasonable way for white to play. Here, black doesn't want to have an extra pawn and double pawns. Black would take and then play h4 and have a pass pawn. But here, it's much more difficult to get the king into the game. And I think this is sort of the last chance for white to give any kind of resistance. I think black should win the game, but here it will be a much longer game. I just have one question. After rook d2, rook d2, um, c takes on d2. That pawn cannot be taken if we protect it with the bishop, right? Like with our bishop, if we put, manage to put the bishop on um, b4, the king cannot reach it before we reach b4. And then that pawn is there. So we bring out a king and eventually uh, remove his bishop uh, from c2 and we queen our pawn. Isn't that winning? It, it, it might work. Uh, but again, this, this is a sort of very forcing way where let's say that uh, this is this here we could get into a complex uh, concept which here white will try to play for fortress so white is not trying to do something active he's trying to just prevent you from bringing in the king and creating creating trade. i have a feeling this is winning and uh, this is is, but it's a decision I can do later. I think this is really the most important. This. Um, playing h5 and simply improving my structure is uh, is very strong. So probably in the variation we saw before, with, where I get the pass pawn on h4, so I have this one strong pass pawn one place. Then I would play rook d2, and oh. have the two strong uh, pass pawn. But in a position, and this is very much strategic, uh, a thing that's is very. Uh, difficult to understand before you, you develop your, your abilities in chess. Strategically, when my opponent cannot do anything, I don't want to make decisions now that that I you know I cannot undo. That's for free and you got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey by the way that Queen Eight was was it bad in the previous moves? <laughs> um yes. <laughs> K 
case closed. <laughs> let, let, let me say, in a position where there were many good moves, it doesn't it doesn't come up on the the, the top score list. I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but it, it, that's you, an you Indian think, way of think, saying it. Polite. You think, uh, you, you, I know you're begging for a point, but it's not coming. <laughs> You have to earn it. You know. Guys, okay, so here I, I played G5 as we, we are back King now. F3. Just, just to uh, tell the viewers that in case uh, if it is lagging, just make sure you refresh it. And just to give you an update, all of them got points for King F7 G, uh, and uh, Rook D2 move. Uh, some might try After to... Biswa begged. After so I begged for a point. Some might try to get a point for his move here, uh, which was Queen A8 in this position, but uh, that was not uh, given to him. So that's why uh, this is where we are now. Uh, Rook E2, H5 by Jakob, King G2, and now came the move uh, G5, King F3, King F7, improving the position, Rook G2, G4, controlling the light squares, King E2. King went up, King e1. So, so I just want to point out, look at the white rook. Why do we want to exchange that? It, it's really like, um, I don't know if you've seen this thing with a, a board, which is three times three squares, and then a knight in the middle. This is what we call animal cruelty, yeah? The cage is too small, it cannot go anywhere. Bishop d1 was played here. And uh, slowly and steadily, Jakob keeps improving his position, rook c2. And, and my uh, opponent is not doing anything. I'm just, uh, okay, here I defend my pawn indirectly. But I am just playing in slowly. And here we get, in a moment, we get to my favorite moment of the game. A3. Uh, and this is? So. Uh, this is A3. your favorite moment, yeah? Well, no, this is sort of the, the next thing. But my favorite moment comes in a few moves. And okay. uh, we'll be Guys, clear by then. Here, black to move. Here's your next point. Two minutes, Yako. Oh, okay. Ah, one. 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 Okay. Yep. I have to be somewhere soon. Okay. <laughs> one minute, guys. Uh, black to play. What would you do here? By the way, while you think, uh, uh, there was a couple of super chats. One was by Yashodhan, I think. Yashodhan Hazare. Just a second. Yeah. Yashodan Hazare who says, India loves you, Jakob. When are you visiting us again? Love the badminton match between you and Sagar three years ago. Oh. He has yeah, seen it. No, I, you I, you, tra you, you <laughs> trained for three months. <coughs> and and I played uh, I played tennis. <laughs> and I beat you. I, I was so upset at losing to Jakob and I have a video on Chessbase India, but that video has very few views. So guys, don't go and watch it. Let it be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when are you visiting back to India, Jakob? That's what Please invite want. me, Saga. <laughs> okay. okay. I think my next visit has to be Mumbai. I have not been to Mumbai. Mumbai was the first place I visited in India. And since I've been in... Emdaba, Delhi, Guwahati, Calcutta, Chennai. Um, but I need to go back to Mumbai. It's yeah. where it's at, isn't it, Saga? Yes, absolutely. Adiban says, for Samai QT, no need to read Sagar. Oh, as you already said last super. Adiban is on fire today, yeah? He sent for Also Samai. today. <laughs> also today, yeah. So, guys, what's your move here? Samai, what's your move? What's F4. F4 for Samai, Biswa? Yeah, F4. F4, uh, Vaibhav? H4. H4. Uh, two people have said F4 here and Vaibhav H4, uh, Jakob. So H4 is not a bad move, uh, but you know, when you have a competition, you have to have a loser. So F4 is the right move. Uh -huh. uh, what I chose to play. And it uh, is just more... Uh, more direct than h4 but h4 is, is really not bad so we should give one one point for f4 and half a point for h4 yeah okay the main reason why f4 is better is we're going to go in and uh, and try to attack the e5 pawn the king oh i thought the... because you're because you're playing against the bishop on one well you you <laughs> you will enjoy the moment in a, a bit you know chess is, is there's a limitation for how funny chess gets 
but uh, there's some moments where you when you understand it there can be some aesthetics uh, about it at least so right. f4 is great it uh, brings in the king f3 would be really really fantastic as you mentioned uh if, if black gets to play f3 browning moment oh. of the strategy the bishop is totally dominated and as promised we get to a a concrete moment uh, towards the end so bishop d2 he played b4 trying to create a pass pawn now here a little, little important thing here just to explain now it would seem like very natural to take on b4 yeah a pawn a5 is hanging and he plays b4 and he's threatening to take but in reality, if we take, that would give the white rook a chance to sort of get into the game again. It's, it's, it's too late anyway. We can do almost whatever we want, but it's bad technique. And white doesn't want to split up his pawns. He needs to have the pawns sort of working together to push them forward and then being a factor. So I'm not afraid of him taking my pawn at all. So I would, would never take on b4. I played h4. I'm no, trying I to just, create a pass uh... pawn. To just to the viewers who missed this uh, very important point that a b4 a b4 just gives a file to the opponent although maybe not important but it's uh, a good technique to let the pawns be and get on with your job here so h4 was played c5 g3 <clears throat> by the way a point with a lot of these things here where it's like i'm saying yeah this is the best move but these moves all these moves are also good because I'm constantly playing the best technical moves, I don't get difficult decisions down the line. And this is really, really useful. Um, so uh, if you are as limited in, uh, in mental capacity as I am, avoiding difficult decisions is really useful. So therefore playing these good technical decisions, uh, like not taking on B4 is a, uh, He's making things easy. Okay, he plays c6. And here we should try to see if we can find a way to win the game. And luckily there are many. Yeah, so here uh, it's the last question of the game. Black to play, what would you play here? So we should give them some time, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I think uh, let's uh, let's give them uh, five minutes here. This is, wow. This be good. Uh, why why would you give them five minutes here? Because it's a very concrete moment where they have to calculate. Well, this is simply uh, again good habits. Now, now, good results comes from good habits. So when you have a moment where you have to be a bit more concrete, even if it looks like you have many many good ways to continue. You should make sure that you take your time and, and don't mess things up. Mm. So guys, please try to calculate a little deeper. Five minutes is a lot of time. It's almost half of the time of the time control games you play. Uh, try to figure out how uh, black can actually win the game, you know, without giving white any chances. Also in the chat, guys, try to think this is a shift from uh, being technical to being very concrete. And many times people are unable to do it and they spoil winning positions. So you don't really want that to happen. So try to be very, very concrete in your calculations. If you make a move, what will white play? What are his options? What will you play? So try to think deeper. Guys, I did give a point to Samai. It was not like he's on five points. He's on four. Sure, you give your opponent no chances, calculate accurately.
So it's the smell of success, yeah? <laughs> the smell of a new book is great. But with it, Gujarat, they gave me an old book. There's no smell. Mm. Vedit Gujarati gifted this book to me. Excellent. It smells like his desk. Oh, uh, do, do you know my book, Attacking Manual? Saga, no. can we can, can we can we send some my uh, sure. copy of the Attacking Manual? Yeah, I will do Ooh. that. Thank so, you. Uh, it has a uh, an axe on the board, on the front cover. It has a an axe. In the book, an axe, ah. oh. an axe. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's one of the be, uh, sort of uh, the book which won an award. I, if that was the book for which you got the award, right, Jacob? Yeah, from, one from of Rishi the awards. Anand. Yes. Yeah. One but yeah, the one with Anand, there was uh, Taki Manual one and two. Yeah. Yeah. This was my my first, maybe my second really really good book. Um, I did not write many really good books, but uh, but this one I really like. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a it's basically gives you an idea of how to create attacks and different attacking motifs. It's a very nice nice book. Uh, by the way, Samai, the fact that you are flipping through the book means you have calculated everything here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fast. Okay, got it. Unlike my peers. <laughs> Maybe that's why I lost the tournament. Huh? <laughs> I I like how Bisma is trash talking when he got beaten by Samai, but still he's like, मुझे वो फर्क नहीं पड़ता. It's just the fact that Samai didn't win the tournament. He can't bring it up now after he has lost. <laughs> he can't be like you also lost. Doesn't work. <laughs> Okay, guys, time is up. I was seeing that both Biswa and Vaibhav were trying to calculate very carefully with their fingers. Samai did it in his head. Let's see. Let's start with uh, Vaibhav this time. Vaibhav, what's your move? Rook H1. Okay. And uh, okay. Yaakob... So, what do you play after King G2? So, uh, King G2, I go Rook H2. Uh, King goes back to F1. And then you play. Uh, sorry. And then, yeah, uh, that's where I kind of like got a little stuck because uh, now I play G two, and if he he can't take obviously, but if he goes to G one, then uh, Bishop to E, uh, Bishop E three, I think feels the kind of easy. because Actually, now he can't take the rook because I'm queening. Yes, I think this is uh, absolutely excellent. No, no, the two other guys just say, yeah, me too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, okay, but, but, but the thing is, of course, after uh, rook h1, king to 2, rook h2, he plays king g1, not king yeah, f1. Yeah, so king g1, uh, yeah, uh, king g1, the bishop goes out, bishop comes to e3, mm -hmm. and uh, I couldn't finish calculating, but I think uh, bishop to f2 kind of, does it but i have to be sure once again like i'll have to look uh, i couldn't finish all the possibilities c7 does bishop f2 finish it i don't know c7 looks dangerous yeah after that for white uh, but uh check and i'm meaning for sure no g2 king takes f2 now the bishop is hanging on f2. after c7 rook h1 i have king g2 yeah so uh i'm gonna lock you to have perpetual check so, I uh, couldn't finish but 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 you know the fact that you didn't calculate every move to the end, I don't think you should be punished for this. So uh... so I tried here, but like I couldn't find, and that's why uh, that's when I landed a bishop on f2 because I couldn't see taking the rook making any sense. Also, like I know I have a check if the king goes there, but I couldn't finish it. I couldn't okay. finish all the lines. So. so so there's a thing I'm working with, uh, you know, many, many strong players. Uh, I worked with uh, most of the, the best Indian players, Sam Shankla and Gail Fand and, and many other 26, 2700 players. And one thing that's a, a, a general characteristic is that it's very, very rare, even on top level, that people miss really important moves, which are not 
in the start of the calculation in the first three moves. So uh, the fact that some things are towards the end where you're like here, I feel I have many options and so on. Um, for grandmaster level, I would say your calculation is falling a bit short, but I think that's okay for, because that's not really uh, your challenge at this point in life. Um, so I, I thought this was really good, but we should also hear Samai and Bishwa what they, they want to play. I, I was thinking Bishop E3. First move? Yeah. Okay. Bishop E3. And, and then if you go C7, mm -hmm. then I have Rook H1 check. Okay. And if I go King E2? If you go King uh, E2, then I come uh, this, uh, then I go uh, Rook H2 check. Uh -huh. And I will promote that pawn maybe before itself. But yeah. I also promote my pawn. But mine comes with uh, or maybe I under promote two knights. It comes with queen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that my uh, promotion is helping me better. Yeah, here, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, che cheating a little bit because I don't want to say anything that's wrong. But here the computer says that white is already making a draw. Oh, also G2, position, maybe uh, just G2 even loses. Yeah. G2. And uh, instead of uh, this, if we directly uh, promote, instead of coming back with check, um also this is uh, not so clear uh so like uh, what king e2 and then g2 queen g2 queen queen but the uh, white takes a queen first so then uh, comes a lot of checks sure and i don't uh, think you can escape these checks yeah yeah no i was just calculating and then my cat started mooning she has to get some food so and that's why you were looking in the king's gambit book <laughs> You, you know, he has a cat gambit, yeah, Jakob? What he does uh, cat is that, gambit. Yeah, when he is losing, he types on the chat of any, uh, pro, uh, like, where he's playing. The cat from over the keyboard, yeah? <laughs> he says, my cat is not well and gets a draw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bisa, oh, what's very... your answer? Does it even matter after that blunderous performance by Samay? <laughs> Does it even matter? <laughs> I'll, I'll just... Uh... Repeat what Vavos said, go on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was calculating rook h1 only. I I was calculating more on the king d line because that's what my opponent will play. <laughs> but, uh, well, direct promotion, right? This is g2. You, can, done then. Yeah, you g2, get g1, you get queen first and maybe queen f1 mate will be fine. Even I was thinking the rook h1, but then I go get five minutes. I was like, it cannot be rook h1 check. It has to be something crazy. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, when you take the rook away from control of the white pawn, you sort of have to know that uh, it's not just going to go there, become a queen, and then suddenly you're missing out, you know? So the things you have to be careful of, because you're doing something that's uh, uh, with bigger consequences, are the sort of the things you allowed. Just to G1. Yeah. King G1. King so G1. in the game, uh, in the game, he played uh, King G1. Yeah, if King F1, uh, I think Weibo. Yeah, G2 uh, they, was entirely this... right. Bishop E3. Also, King G3 is, was what I actually had planned. Uh, G2, um, King G1, King G3, and the Rook H1 mate. Right. So here uh, he went King G1 check, King F1, and now I think this was a key moment check. King G2. So I will stop here. We we'll stop here. We have a uh, have uh, five minutes before I have to leave. Oh man, this is another tricky position here because yeah, white let's, pawn let's, is let's about. Give, let's give three minutes. Do Do you think Weibo gets a full point for the last one? No, he must get two. It's a critical moment. It was wow. really really <laughs> impressive. Wow. I also said the same move, so I also get two points. No, no, you get one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> What, what do you mean? Why? You're a comedian asking for justice. Come on. <laughs> uh, anyways, can we give Samay minus one for extra overconfidence? <laughs> can we give it really fast? Like, do it in your mind and just give it also. <laughs> Samay, come on. Now show it. Is that simple? You can, no. Samay, Samay, think, think. Try to get the full point here, I guess, if you do it yeah, yeah. well. And if others I've had this cannot... question in my game a couple of times.
generous Jakob. It's going in the chat, yeah. Generous. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can always give other people's points away for free. This is the benefit of being a trainer. So. Yeah. Well, guys, try to finish this with a high. Uh, just imagine you are playing comedians on board. This is the finals, and or maybe semi-finals, and. <laughs> for Vishwa quarterfinals. I have I found the mate. Same. Really. Wow. Really, yes. guys, please, please be sure. Don't take it lightly. Calculate all the whites' defenses because this is where you guys do lack a bit when it comes to finishing off your opponents. So here's your chance. Okay, let let me not be arrogant. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's the problem. Big problem. Yeah, it's made of most of them. And this point will also decide who wins this today's episode. Who loses already has been decided. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless this question has like four points, then you will get like a chance to make a comeback. So what, what the losers are, what the, the people who tuned in to listen to us today, yeah? <laughs> I'm sorry if my attention seems to be elsewhere, but uh, my friend Renier, he sent me oh a, a puzzle. And, Tanya. Uh, I had to look. Tanya sent you a puzzle. Oh. Renier. Renier Castellanos. Ah, Renier. Okay, okay. Got yeah, it. he's, uh, he's a GM ah, who's too lazy to get the yeah. last norm. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, he's oh. also a trainer, yeah? At, uh, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a really, really good guy and really... Uh, good trainer and works in the academy and sends me puzzles all the time that I cannot solve. Okay, guys, uh, last point here. Uh, let's see. Let's start this time with Biswa. What's your move? Uh, rook g1. Okay. Okay, rook c7. G1. You cannot start the pawn now. No, he's giving rook g1 uh, check. It's a check. Uh, rook g1. King h3 only move, right? Yeah. Okay. King h3 is very fast. Um, rook h1 check. Okay, king g2. This is where we already were. Oh, <laughs> the king can go back to g2. This is a big problem I did not see. Sorry, guys. Oh, I think Biswa thought here rook h2 and mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we seriously remove two points for this, Jacob? No, please. No, 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 no. Well, this is a. I think, uh, except for the rook fd8 earlier, I think this is the biggest candidate for minus points we have seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a blunder! Okay, Samai, your chance. Uh, rook h2 check. Uh, rook h2 check. King, King F1. One. This is also where we just were. So. <laughs> what, Samai, what's your move? Yes, yeah, no, yeah. only difference is, yeah. Now and the then, is on E3. Yeah, so then we do that, no? <laughs> we do that. Yeah, that uh, is there, no? There. Uh, uh, look at one check. Well, yeah, we go back where we were, yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought Okay, okay our only a, hope, a, only hope is Vaibo now. Vaibo, please Vibo. say. Come on, <laughs> show us the mate. Come oh, on, I thought, um, okay, there are two things I got confused by. Should I give a check on G1 first and then take the bishop or take the bishop first? Because what my idea is basically to rook to come to D2. Okay, uh, so take yeah, C7. And then king, yeah, uh, rook D2. Okay. A, A. Uh, takes, takes. And then I also queen, but. Uh... Okay, okay, yeah. okay. 
How uh, uh, Weber is this winning? It but is. Win it is winning eventually. Yes, it is. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's better than repeating moves. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but uh, on the other hand, when you're repeating moves, you you're just showing that you're in control of the session, and then you can do something great afterwards. So, <laughs> but that point. that day I didn't plan. No, no. It, I was thinking it's a rapid game, so I get some more extra seconds after oh, I. Oh, anything. <laughs> okay, yeah, Jakob's yeah. solution uh, so, was no, beautiful. Was... I, I, I think okay. something that wins so convincingly as what Wipa here says, uh, we cannot give this uh, anything else but a full point. On the other hand, Sama and Bishwa, because they're playing for draw, definitely deserve half a point, and they haven't ruined anything. Can still win the position. <laughs> really, uh, half a point. But, but, yes, but, yes. There, but, but there can be only one champion. Which will have to be me. I played rook takes d1 and c7. Rook takes d1, c7, and beautiful and move here. here. I play king g4. King g oh, rook d1, mate. Mate. Oh, man. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, wow. The closest to a real tactic that was in this game. So yeah. I, I understand this was a, a very tough going. Uh, for you, it's a. Uh, for for early on in in development in chess is is actually quite abstract a lot of this these things, but I hope uh, it made sense to you, and uh, I have to say that uh, uh, I think you have improved immensely, and uh, as we have seen in in all the episodes of which I've watched every minute of every episode, and I have not lied about that at all, of course. Uh, <laughs> Because why would I? Uh, so all I can say is uh, I think uh, for the benefit, especially of the viewers, we should sign off. And I'm totally <laughs> taking Saga's job here. And uh, no, Just before signing off, guys, I would like to say that... Uh, I would like to say final thing, which is I look forward to meeting all of you in person in the near future when you will be allowed to travel. We will definitely be India 2021. Yes, nice. for sure. By the way, guys, Killer Chess Training is one of the best platforms. Uh, Jakob, can you give me three points, please? One of the <laughs> one of one of the best. The best. So can the anyone best. do better? Yeah, the best. Here, there's definitely a bonus point for uh, for mentioning <laughs> Killer Chess Training. Give me Absolutely. one point. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Okay. The so, best. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on, Mitsua. Chess Best India and Killer Chess Training are both platforms to train on. Sagar, give me half point. Jacob, give me half point. Now I make a full point. <laughs> no, no, let's not do it. Any, any, anyway, so killer chess training. I think at the moment we have a special offer that you can try a week uh, for, I, I think it's uh, uh, like 19 euros or something. Uh, try a week trial membership. Uh, yearly membership is. 600 uh, what 599 euros which is about 700 dollars and we have something like 500 hours of training a year you can see faces of some of our trainers and the the really excellent trainers we have spain's uh, number one trainer yulena ismendi who uh he's half spanish uh half american so his english is absolutely flawless uh, oh. in general we we have everything we have the goods. All you have to do is click, 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 and you'll be there. Yeah, and Chess Base India is an absolutely fantastic website, I have to say. You. Thank you so much. Guys, please check out Killer Chess Training. And uh, Jakob, it was an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, I learned a lot from this, once again, reviewing this game. And I'm sure Vaibhav, Samai, and Biswa also took home some important points today. As so well as... Saga, you, you have to promise me something. Yes. No, don't ask me Grandmaster next, title. Next next, <laughs> next time uh, I come to India, yeah. can you please find someone who is not more handsome than me that I can have a photo with? You know, <laughs> when I first came to India, so many people wanted their photo taken with me. And I understood, oh, you know, like, oh, this is great. And they read my books and said, no. After a few days, I realized what it is. Indians are so incredibly handsome uh, people. But of course, everything is always by comparison. So some Indians are less handsome than others. <laughs> so this is why they wanted the photo with me, because they put it up at home on the Facebook or in the wall or so on. 
and they look great because they're next to a white person. You know, <laughs> this is, I, I understood after a few days, and I understood it was my duty. And uh, as a Brit, you can only uh, when you're in India, you can only apologize and say we're better now. And uh, <laughs> I will, I will try to find a few next time you come. <laughs> Luckily, I have a lot of photos of you and me together in the book, so it sort of compensates. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was the thing. Yeah, like you took a lot of pictures with me just so that you could feel good later. Yeah, <laughs> Amrut and I, we took fifty photos of you at least with the 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 phone, always on the phone, any situation. We when Sagai was sleeping in the flight seat, we put the phone to his ear and took photos, you know, just <laughs> so he could feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jakob, that's the thing about Jakob as well. He's working all the time. Right now, I think he you have around ten pr- book projects going on. Yes, is that? No, true? no, about thirty. Thirty book wow. projects. Yes. Wow. wow. And yeah, these books. Please Sorry. use Mama Earth hair oil. <laughs> Remove stress. <laughs> I'm not stressed. What, what, what makes you think I'm stressed? <laughs> Just in case. Somebody, somebody. Ah, Saga, you've been teaching them prophylaxis, have you? <laughs> no, he has this Mama Earth uh, uh, products and which he promotes in every every stream. And so here he may, paid you to have stress so that he can promote Mama Earth products. <laughs> No, I need some of this. Saga, you you need to get me some. Okay, Mama Earth products going to all the way to Scotland now. No, 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 no. Send send me flight tickets. I'll come and collect myself. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll do. We'll do. Mama Earth ki jumpy is going on in the. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay, this is uh, damn nice, Yakob. Thank you. Thank so you, much. Yakob. Thank I you know you much. have to leave. Uh, thank you so much for this, and see you. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. And uh, guys, before you leave here, I just want I have you to... to go. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah. Bye, bye, Jacob. Before uh, the others leave, I just need to update the points here. Yeah, five point is that. Yeah, this is what we are going to win. Yeah, seven and half, four and half, and eight. Jacob, lagti ho. Abey, chup. थिंग विच नीड्स लाइक ये मुंह किया तो ये ये मुंह किया तो क्या इधर दो ऑप्शन है एंड क्या ना मैं दो 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 से पहले मैंने अपना बिशन भी हैंग किया था वो वो कि रुक लेके वो एफ सेवन वाला ये सब तो हाँ एफ सेवन वाला मेरे को लगा मैं बिशन वापस भी ले रहा हूँ तो मैं कुछ नहीं होता ये सब सुन के मेरे को लगा ठीक है I'm just two steps away from another stupid thing so that's all right भाई कितना सही लगा ना एक गर्मी से मिलके हाँ भाई क्य but yeah he is very good and uh, he is very uh, if you just search yakob agard chess base india you will find a lot of videos with him because i went on a tour in 2017 with him when he came to mumbai then gujarat then uh, delhi chennai uh, we went there then we flew to malaysia uh, indonesia uh, singapore uh, hong kong uh, and uh, five countries philippines thailand uh, six Bape. over there and it was like an asia tour with him so we covered everything on chess base india so if you just uh, search that you will find videos of uh, badminton play then him eating food and lot of different things very cool uh, grandmaster very, very nice, nice trainer and yeah mereko pehle pehle mereko lag raha hai ki mereko sirf sagar jaise i am tak to matlab aisa chess khelna sagar ke acha ab mereko lag raha hai yaar aapki job kaafi mast hai <laughs> oh i i like it that you are uh, you had to mention i am just uh, no need for that <laughs> there was no need for just a set just kela ta ke jata just i am bekar bol ke insult kar raha main bhi wahi joke ke liye ja raha tha main bol raha tha ki kitna acha laga grandmaster se milke khair abhi call ko grandmaster nahi hai main wo bolne wala tha agar bhai apna kuch gussa diya uske 
<laughs> but guys we should meet uh, before uh, some point that so that we can unbox the prize you know i would love yes. to unbox in uh, person because then vaibhav can feel it because he's so close now to it uh, but it all depends on how many sessions we have and right 100, now 100. right <laughs> <laughs> like improving chess ekdam fatafat fatafat sessions hote the like i was like at 15 20 ho gaya 25 30 yahan pe ab 12 hi hue oh it's like every session is uh... but uh, we want to learn from 100 grandmasters sare <laughs> indian grandmasters <laughs> yeah we want to see everybody's game why not jab tak man kare sare maybe matlab aap chaho to rok sakte ho that's all right that's okay with me we can start another series with all indian grandmasters No, no. Improve. Wait, it goes on. Just with international masters. It goes on. It'll go on, and not not international masters. So, what does that mean? What does that mean? When GM is training, uh, we should have a parallel stream called international master chess. Okay, so it's it's a car for that again. Bye, log. <laughs> okay. I am Hona. Be, it's a little difficult. It's not so easy. हमको मालूम है ठीक है ठीक है समय अभी व्हाट्स व्हाट्स द प्लान नाउ एनी सोऊंगा भाई सोया नहीं मैं अच्छे से अच्छा रात से सोए ही नहीं हो मैं सुबह गया आरटीओ ऑफिस कुछ तो गाड़ी का भाई गाड़ी खरीदना कितना हेडेक है भाई गाड़ी खरीद दे दो ना सब कुछ घर पे लाके आरटीओ ऑफिस भी हमें जाए नंबर भी हमें करे उधर लाइन में भी हमें खड़े हो खरीदा गाड़ी दो सब घर पे I I am telling you one thing the more assets you have the more maintenance you have to keep if you own a house you have to keep it well if you own a car you it, just live on rent take uber take take all these things and just live as <laughs> you know, my father is really uh, wanting to get a fancy number for the car and he wants the Achha. number to be the same as the atm pin <laughs> 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 फुल ट्राई कर रहा हूं इसको मिल नहीं रहा वो नंबर बोला क्यों चाहिए वो नंबर वो लड़ाई हो रहा है अलग घर पे वाओ दैट्स अ रियली नाइस एक्शन टू गो टू टू रिमेंबर अ एटीएम पिन यार अब भाई ने स्ट्रीम पे बता दिया है 5500 लोगों के साथ अभी सब समय के पापा का कार्ड ढूंढ लेंगे भाई अमेजिंग अमेजिंग एंड टुनाइट क्या क्या कौन सा कौन सा नंबर के लिए अप्लाई किया अभी हैदराबाद में सब गाड़ी का नंबर नोट कर रहे सारी की सारी जो दिखाबाद एंड नो समी इन एनी ए टी एम प्लीज यू कैन पुट टू एट टू टूगेदर ये ये समय ने इतना इन्फॉर्मेशन दिया जो बहुत ही ऐसे जूसी इन्फॉर्मेशन है पर फिर भी यूजलेस है क्योंकि कुछ नहीं कर सकते अनलेस वी गेट द कार्ड सो ट्राई करेंगे समय सब एक दिन करेंगे इफ आई डोंट डू 1600 देन एटीएम पिन रिवील ओह नाइस दैट्स अ गुड वन बाय द वे समय 6.5 किलो का कुछ हो रहा है मेरा एक्चुअली 2 किलो बढ़ गया आप बढ़ कैसे रहा है भाई इंटरमीडिएट फास्ट नहीं करो ना कुछ खाओ ही मत मैं मेरे को ये सब स्ट्रेस आ रहा है सीओबी मामा अर्थ हाँ मामा अर्थ की चम्पी हाँ मामा अर्थ से कम हो सकता है करेक्ट यस देखो ना मैं रोस्टेड चिकन खा रहा हूँ दिन भर बैठ के बस अच्छा एक कड़कनाथ चिकन है क्या कड़कनाथ क्या है भाई भाई मस्त तो चिकन है कड़कनाथ चिकन कड़कनाथ क्या है भाई कड़कनाथ पता नहीं कल मैं आर्टिकल पढ चलो दोस्तों हम इस पॉइंट पे पहुंच गए थे बाय चिकन का वैरायटी अगर डिस्कस करना है तो फिर 5000 लोग जा सकते हैं आई थिंक बढ़ रहे लोग बढ़ रहे जब जब कैलकुलेशन का सीन आया तो लोग कम हो गए अब एक बार कड़कनाथ चिकन सर्च मारो ना देखते हैं एक्चुअली क्या है देखना प्लीज अभी स्ट्रीम पे हां हां सर्च मारो कड़कनाथ चिकन है क्या चीज क्या कर रहे हैं हम वो जाको बोल रहा है कि हम रोज देख रहा हूं तुम्हारा स्ट्रीम भाई मुझे कड़कनाथ चिकन देखना है ठीक <laughs> है सच में देखना है हां हां पता करते ना क्या है कड़कनाथ चिकन अरे एक सेकंड रुक जाना पहले इतना तो टाइम नहीं मैं कह रहा हूं लगाओ ना मैं लगाओ भाई क्या है सागर लगाओ अरे सच में सच में है कड़कनाथ चिकन 
अरे ये मालूम है ना मेरे को ये चिकन ये बहुत ही वो ब्लैक चिकन होता है ना पूरा अंदर से भी ब्लैक रहता है बहुत एक्सपेंसिव होता है ना ये चिकन का नाम कौन रखा है मतलब दे कुड़े स्टॉप इट कड़क आई डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द पॉइंट ऑफ एडिंग नाफ टू इट लेट्स नेम हिम वीडियो देखो उसका टाइटल हाउ टू गेट रिच विद कड़क नाथ ये एक जन है सुमित अग्रवाल करके वो बहुत बार उन्होंने भेजा है समय इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एवरीथिंग इवन फॉर माय लो परसेंटाइल इन कैट तीन चार बार बोले है तो इसके लिए अभी मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ जरूर भाई चलो दोस्तों कड़कनाथ चिकन भी हो गया अभी मिलते हैं अभी इसका पढ़ना नहीं आपको आप पढ़ो पढ़ो चलो पढ़ते हैं ये लिखा हुआ है कड़कनाथ चिकन बेनिफिट कड़कनाथ चिकन मीट इज आल्सो बिलीव टू हेल्प रेगुलेट द मेंस्ट्रुअल साइकिल बिसाइड्स प्रोसेसिंग एफ्रोडिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज साइंटिफिक नेम बड़ा है इसका कड़कनाथ चिकन का क्या है नाम पे गालुस गालुस डोमेस्टिकस ओह बाय रुक आज मैं कड़कनाथ मंगाता हूँ देखता हूँ क्या <laughs> मैं मैं लगे ये तो फुल ये चिकन्स का डार्क नाइट किंग है वो डार्क नाइट किंग है फुल भाई कड़कनाथ वर्सेस कड़कनाथ कॉक फाइट कड़क 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 भाई बहुत हो गया भाई ये कौन सा स्ट्रीम है ग्रैंड मास्टर चेस एपिसोड टू है और क्या होगा पता है एक एक कोई तो यूट्यूब चैनल रहेगा समय के फैंस या कुछ वो ये पूरा एपिसोड ग्रैंड मास्टर चेस में इतना इंस्ट्रक्टिव मोमेंट्स था बिशप टेक्स एफ थ्री वगैरह वो ये लास्ट पार्ट कड़कनाथ चिकन का कट करके डालेगा और फिर उसको पचास हजार व्यू आएंगे हंड्रेड भाई कड़कनाथ चिकन बहुत सही चीज है मार्केट में अभी ग्रैंड मास्टर जितना पैसा कमा सकता है कड़कनाथ फार्मिंग करके उससे बहुत जल्दी तुम कमा सकते हो बहुत I'm not sure how many people can teach me Bishop F3, but I'm. Uh, I think there might be lesser people who can tell me about Karatnath Chicken. Yes. <laughs> More trivial information right now. चलो दोस्तों. Bye bye. 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 अरे बाय 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 कितने दिन बाद आए आप चिजबिज इंडिया पे <coughs> मैं तो रोज ही देखता था आपकी स्ट्रीम अच्छा अरे यहीं पे ये ये इधर ही है भाई विश्वा कल्याण इधर ही होगा देखो अच्छा इधर हंड्रेड परसेंट पता है भाई नहीं ये इधर ही है गए वो उनको बुरा लग रहा था कि ही वाज वेस्टिंग टाइम ये कड़कना चिकन वगैरह उनको प्रैक्टिस करना रहता है चेस का ही इज वर्किंग वेरी हार्ड ऑन चेस सॉल्विंग लॉर्ड ऑफ पोजिशन अगर वो वापस इधर आएंगे तो आई विल फील लाइक मतलब सीरियस नहीं है वो चेस गया गया वो इज नॉट हियर बढ़िया सागर भाई लव यू करते और एक ग्रैंड मास्टर चेस करते हैं जल्दी हाँ ग्रैंड मास्टर yeah. चेस करते हैं यस यस चलो मैं खा रहा हूँ चिकन मेरे को बहुत भूख लगी है बाय बाय सी यू सी यू गाइस टू नाइट एट टेन थर्टी वी विल ये क्या हुआ यार ये क्या है <laughs> ये क्या था ये देखा तुमने डिजाइन हाँ ये दिस इज बेसिकली अरे 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 दिस इज बिकॉज ओ इधर ये भाई भाई अब मैं सच में जा रहा हूँ यार बहुत हो गया लगा आपको कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट काम है आप बहुत कड़कनाथ कड़कनाथ अरे भाई विश्वास भी कैसा यार करूं मैं भी जा रहा हूँ वैसे ये क्या हो रहा है आई शुड स्टॉप वर्चुअल शेयरिंग ये कोई तो एक जन बचा है रूम में so i have stopped it and i think all under control dosto and the stream is ending now sabse zyada log abhi aa gaye hain dekhne ko 6200 people when kadaknath chicken was being discussed fantastic guys but i hope today's session with yakob was instru- instructive for me he is one of the finest trainers in the world of chess and he managed to show some very very instructive moments i hope that you found them useful uh, especially how you dominate the bishop on c2 how you put put your pieces in the right po- positions fantastic also giving up your bishop on b7 for the knight so i'll see you guys today evening uh, at 10:30 pm tonight for vidits round 6 to 10 and also other players
Until then, guys, take care, take rest, keep eating, whatever you like. Yeah, I'm not going to tell what Pissoa has said. <laughs> See you. Bye-bye.